and welcome to episode 16 of 8-Bit Bastards. We have our website up and running. The Flash version is on there. It's awesome. I want to thank Jacob and Eric for all their hard work on it. It's pretty amazing. We've gotten some props from actual web designers too, which is kind of cool. So please go to our website, 8-Bit Bastards. Spell out the 8, E-I-G-H-T, bitbastards.com, and check out our website there. Please like us on Facebook, do our Twitter, and we have nothing YouTube. else. YouTube, yes, go to our YouTube channel and rate, review, like, rub us up and down on our naughty parts on iTunes so we can uh, be back on the front page again because that was awesome. And without further ado, joining this evening, Brad, Jacob, Justin. Thank you, gentlemen, as always. And uh, we might be a little light on the games this evening because we all just been kind of playing all the awesome games that we've had out right now. I was actually talking to my wife about this and with like, back to the college and stuff, like there's a new game every goddamn week and like, I haven't finished Blacklist. I haven't touched. I played an hour or two of Ninja Turtles. I got Diablo three coming out next week. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like there's so much shit that I have coming out. I just haven't got a chance to touch any of it, and it sucks. We've been recording for almost four months now, and I haven't beat a game in four months. <laughs> That's kind of sad. I've beaten a whole bunch of shit. It's just I'm in the same boat. Justin is like I got Final Fantasy fourteen just came out. I got Killer is Dead, Payday two, Payday two, Diablo three comes out next week. I have to pick up. And then two weeks out, or now we're pretty much like two weeks away to a Grand Theft Auto V. So, I mean, it's I, I'm honestly looking forward to October, because October, there's no video games coming out for me, well, so Assassin's I'll get to catch Creed. up. Well, you're not, I don't I, play I know Assassin's not, Creed anymore. Mine, so. but. My wife showed me the commercial. She said, oh, have you seen that new Diablo commercial? It's really funny. It has like this sexual innuendo behind it or whatever. I said, no. She goes, oh, here it is. And she rewound it, and we watched it. And it's, uh, it's funny. It's funny. You know, it's funny. You haven't seen it. The, a guy comes home and his girlfriend like he hears girls laughing and giggling and all their clothes are off like there's clothes all over the floor all the way up into up like his room so he runs up there and he opens the door and like his wife's dressed as uh well she was a demon hunter and the other one was dressed as something else and the other one was a witch doctor she's like why don't you pull up a chair and we'll have a, we'll, uh, have a four way and they're all sitting there playing Diablo 3 <laughs> That's pretty awesome. And then the then they show Diablo through or whatever, and then later he's like, I think I should put my pants back on because he's sitting there naked. <laughs> he hasn't put on his costume yet. That's pretty funny. So, Justin, you want to go first tonight? Tell us about Blacklist Co-op. I've been playing Blacklist, and like I said, I, when we spoke about it before, is I was doing a lot of the side missions, and uh, I was playing it, and Brad came over because we do the Thursday night fight night at my house with playing fighting games, and uh, we were waiting for everyone to head over. And I knew it was split screen, I told you about it being split screen. And uh, we hopped in, and we started the mission, and the cool thing I thought was, is you're not bound to each other, you don't have to be within a certain proximity, like, you can do whatever you want in that level. And the levels are really big, and there's multiple routes going multiple places, so I would head one way, Brad would head, a, head another way. And um, you have the mark ability from uh, Conviction. So, like, I can mark a character, and he could see what I marked, and it'll say, player one, mark this character. And if I down someone, then Sam would relay to... I can't remember the guy's name. He would relay to the guy that the guy was down and stuff like that, which is I thought was really fun. It was pretty cool. So you're not two Sams? No, um, you're... I don't know the guy's Bob? name. Bob? Well, no, I know Bob in the campaign... Steve. Bob yeah. Steve. I know in the campaign, there's or what my uh, store manager was telling me was that it's, like, a guy he scouts for you, more or less, in some of the missions. Yeah. It played really well. I'm not a Splinter Cell fan. I'm really not. And uh, the game multiplayer was really fun. We sat there and played it for probably about an hour, just running around figuring out all the different dumb ways you could do this aggravating mission. And dudes with riot gear are pain in the dick. Yeah. It's split screen? Yeah, it's split screen. You can do a split screen co-op, or you can do an online co-op. It's, uh, it's fun, though, because in the levels, there's certain parts of the level, which I spoke last time, is that you can only do co-op. Like, there's a part where, like... I'll, I'll crouch out and I'll throw him up on a wall and then he can pick me up and put me on that wall to get to places faster and stupid shit like that. And the AI wouldn't do that? Um, well, no, because you're by yourself, so there's no you're not tall enough to you know, run, jump on a ledge. And the cool thing about it is, too, is like let's say he marks people and I can sneak up behind them and I can end up being the ones to execute them. Like, the mark goes for either character, which I thought was really cool. Do you feel like you were really far behind, Brad, be on the learning curve because Justin already played the level... No. Well, I played it literally the first two run-throughs. I didn't realize there was, like, mines on the ground. I hit the mines. Uh, once he told me, like, the basic controls, like, A, auto-hopped over stuff. You could crouch run, all that. How to climb. I mean, it played just like uh, Assassin's Creed or most Ubisoft-style games like that. So, it, like, control-wise, I don't think it was, like, any type of true hard learning curve. You play a Splinter Cell game or Assassin's Creed or something like that, you could probably play this game like it's nothing. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's no real learning curve to it. There's a lot of cool, like... Uh 
I don't know. I'm not saying it's. I mean, it's an action stealth game. You can choose one way or the other to do it. You know, it's. I think I have a blast though playing it. It was like I said. It was really fun though because uh, he was going this one ground route that was taking out like the bigger riot gear guys. I was climbing the, literally like the rafters of the buildings, coming up behind the dudes that were all up on like the second floor and taking them all down, sniping them. I, I was just. I would mark them to hop down, either break their necks or shoot them in. Good one person have like an assault rifle getting everybody's attention and the other guy come up behind them all and take them out? You can, depending on the mission parameters. Sure. Like, this mission parameters, like, you can't be seen at all. Because, and I, like I explained in the one episode, that this one was you had to hack their computers. Like, the other one, you had to hack their router. This one, you have to hack their computers. So, it's kind of this, it's basically the same thing. You go to three little points. But there's uh, just a lot of, like, these guys, like... There was one guy that you have to you have to capture him. So you have to sneak up behind him, kick off his helmet or knock off his helmet, and then you you put a gun to his head and then you tag him. You actually you put zip ties around his hand. He's a goddamn nightmare to do it to too because the guys in riot gear they're called heavies, and uh, they're heavy something, and they like they can they're the AI is more intelligent. Like you can't sneak up on them really. Like you have to move super slow. Like you can't just run. Like one guy I can just literally run to him and just take him out. These guys, like, will hear you spin around and knock you down. It's pretty... It became a bitch after a while, because I was playing that level for a while, because I'm really weird with those stealth games. It'll take me forever to do those. You were kind of relating to maybe, like, Army of Two, where one person could aggro everything. Yeah. They all face you, and then the other person just comes behind and, and pops them all from behind, you know, flanks them. That probably Surprisingly, the AI is pretty goddamn smart. Like, it's not... Like, you can literally, like, be right in front of someone, and just because, like, you're in the dark, they don't see you. No, like, if you're within, you know, sight of someone, they will see you, no matter if you're in the dark or not. Like, there is a, a dark meter, because, like, your, your back and, like, your watch will glow to say that you're in the dark. But if you're not behind a wall or behind something, and, like, your boots, too, because you can change your... Uh, gear and it'll tell you like how much stealth it has. Like they'll hear you like sneaking around because the sneak isn't like one hundred percent. It's uh, the AI is pretty. They're pretty intelligent to a point. Yeah. Do you feel is aggravating or do you feel that it's it's um it's actually it's refreshing. It's not you know they kind of they'll walk kind of the same route and once you learn the routes then it's like, okay, I can do this, no no problem. But it's not really like that, because sometimes they'll move differently, or they won't stand in the same place, or like I said, they'll hear you. Like, you'll just be, you'll sneak around, and because your boots aren't the best sneaking boots, you're, you know, you're heard, or your gear is not the best sneaking gear, you're heard, they'll, you know, you'll kick a can by accident you didn't see, or you'll step on a bottle, something along those lines, and someone will be like, what the hell's that? And they'll go, you know, looking for right. it. Which is like, you know, back in the day, I played SOCOM 2 on the PS2 a lot, and we would have a few guys with machine guns and snipers, and we'd have one guy with a silenced weapon go all the way around the map and take people out. That's how we won a lot of matches. Well, I just knew that, you know, a lot of times people say that, the oh, the AI is really good, and all it is is they ramp it up to the AI has perfect 100% accuracy yeah. and can see you anytime they get within a certain radius. So they have 360-degree vision. Once they get within 50 meters of you, the AI can see you, and they have 100% headshot kills perfect every time is it like that or no because they like they'll stumble on shit like and that's my thing too like uh there's a part where like you'll climb up a wall and you can climb onto the railing if you get to a certain part they'll see your head like they'll see like they can see your hands and shit and they'll be like what the hell is that and they'll walk <laughs> over and, and inspect it so with all the replayability of this game you have an awesome first uh, or single player campaign, co-op campaign, split screen, which is always a bonus for me, I feel. That's what I thought was pretty cool. I was like, there's actually a split screen to it. And I don't know if the other ones did that. Or I mean, even this games nowadays don't do split screen. Anymore. Which I know it's just kind of sad that I say that it feels like a bonus to have split screen when it really should just be a standard of any games because sometimes I do want just a friend sitting on the couch with me playing and I don't want to play it online or I don't want him to have to bring his Xbox and lug it over and hook yeah, it up to two TVs TV. and all that nonsense. The only reason I can think of why they stopped doing that is to make you buy two copies. Kind of makes sense. I didn't yeah. really think about that. Yeah, it does make sense. That's, That's a good the point. the only reason I can think of why they would do it. Well, with the, well, with the way multiplayer is online, yeah. Oh, sure, <laughs> but maybe, like Emsa said, you have a friend over and you don't want to lug around two TVs. Well, some of the first-person shooters, are like a Black Ops was the first, I think, Call of Duty you could do two-player two player split-screen of the newer, yeah. like, from, like, Infinity Ward or Treyarch. Because World at War, I don't think you could do it. Nope. I'm pretty sure that was the first one, and then Modern Warfare 3 did it, and same with Black Ops 2. Bastards. 
So you played WoW? Uh, yes, I did play WoW. Um, not as much as I wanted to, <laughs> but uh, I did play WoW. Um, not, not as much as I wanted to. Yeah. Like Why it. do you want to anymore? It's stupid. It's just World of Warcraft. Nothing's really changed in like the six months of me not playing. Like three new patches came out, but that's really like. So why why do you say then I want to play more and I didn't get to? Well, it's your gear, your item level. Like I can't do like in game content because I don't have high enough gear to. It's it's a fucking shenanigans. Like you have to have a certain gear level to get to do heroic dungeons. Your gear item level is four thirty, so I have to get all this gear up to get past item level four thirty. Speaking of MMOs, um, Guild Wars 2 has a new patch coming out in like a week. It's an 8-bit patch. There's going to be a special area you can go into. It's all 8-bit. You can get 8-bit weapons, and it looks pretty awesome. That's pretty cool. That is pretty unique. I guess uh, some inventor created a virtual reality, and you have to go in and like fix the program or something weird. It looks pretty neat. You need an 8-bit sword, and I'm totally going to get it. I'm going to grind until I get it. I kind of am apprehensive on this 8-bit shit. Not to say that this one's bad, but we did the Dead Space 3. They had that 8-bit mode, and it just looked really? really? Yeah, it's it was just this like a is... weird pixelation. Like, it wasn't, like, 8-bit. Right, it's Guild Wars. It just Guild looked Wars. like it was really laggy. It Guild, it's Guild Wars, but it looked like somebody, like, took a Minecraft level or something and made it a little prettier and put it in Guild Wars. I remember they did the 8-bit thing with Left 4 Dead, and that one was awesome because it was top-down view, like old Grand Theft Auto, the original. And it really? was uh, the hardest yeah, goddamn Grand Theft Auto games. Yeah, but it was Left 4 Dead, it's and it was one. pretty cool. It was, was an 8-bit version on the PC. One or two, uh, Left 4 Dead one or two. Uh, yes. <laughs> I have both. But what was it, like an extra thing? No, it was an all uh, its own separate game you had to get. I was looking at that. Yeah, yeah look at that. I honestly never heard of it, but yeah, I'm just, a big Just PC Google it. Probably. Yeah, he's probably lying. No, look for it. Left 4 Dead 8-bit. <laughs> Look it up. Write that down. Write it down. Any other wild well questions? Or well, just... My thing is, you, you're, you're begging, you and Rebecca are begging me. I'm not, here, listen, I'm not begging you to play. I'm not really worried about playing. I would like to play with you because you are a friend of mine, and the more people that play, obviously, the more fun you're going to have of actual friends, not just assholes online. If you don't play, though, I'm not really worried about it. You want to get epic loot gear stuff to be able to play these dungeons at high level one, you transferred your character to a new server, so I'd have to start all over. I'm not going to be able to play those things with you until I hit 90, which I've never 90 a character before. And I had triple XP for... Well, because the triple XP only went to 80. Once we hit 80, then it's top. Uh, but, uh, no, you, yeah, you'd have to pay to uh, transfer your character. You're a grind guy. Why don't you like WoW, Brad? Because it's gay. <laughs> it's, I don't know. I don't like how it plays. I don't like how it plays. He, don't get me wrong. I like vanilla he, WoW. Yeah. I like the original WoW. Like, when I played World of Warcraft before BC, and even BC, BC wasn't bad. I liked BC because they didn't nerf it. Like, it's too... I understand, like, user-friendliness because if you have a game that's too overly complicated, like Final Fantasy XI was, it'll ruin... Like, it'll make people not want to play because it's too fucking tedious to learn how to play it. But I don't ever think, like, a vanilla WoW was like that. When I first played vanilla WoW, the only thing everybody told me was, it takes a long time to level up. Let him jerk off his game real quick. No, I'm not talking about Guild Wars. Oh, I was just saying, oh. I, I love, don't get me wrong, I love games that have crazy grind core, but I just don't like how WoW plays anymore. The fact they took away the skill trees, the, and they, they did like they did Diablo 2. The skill trees in Diablo 2 used to kind of be like World of Warcraft. It's one of the things I liked about WoW when I played it, was you had this skill tree, and you divvied out your points how you saw fit. And honestly, I, I didn't give a shit if someone wanted, thought I should spec this way. It's my character. I'm going to spec it the way I fucking feel like specking it. And I don't know. I enjoyed playing the original World of Warcraft. What I've seen of it now, it's just it's so muddied down. I just I have no interest. It's they they're appealing to a, a mass market where it was like in vanilla. Like it took for fucking ever to do anything. Cause to hit sixty. Oh like, god! I played, it took me fucking four months to hit thirty five. Yeah, like I, I capped out in vanilla at forty, and I was like, it took me for fucking ever to do it because it was it was hard. It was li- and it wasn't the game doesn't hold your hand because the game now is all about the end game content. When vanilla and BC, it was you built yourself up, you got the lore, you knew all that stuff. When it gets to like you know Lich King, you know Cataclysm, and in the mists, it's you know. They're seasoned, you know, seven, eight-year veterans. They don't give a shit. They they want you to get to the cap as fast as you can so you can do in-game content. That's essentially how I, I feel that it is. I, I 100% agree with you because you're one of those six- or seven-year veterans, and you just wanted me to get to the end so we could blow through the stuff, and we never made it, and I got burnt out because I didn't get to go at my own pace. I didn't get to go, how Brad said, you know, vanilla way and grind it out, have fun, learn anything. We skipped so much. You knew where everything was, and I just... it, it, it 
it, yeah, I, did, I, did I have fun? Yes, I did have fun. Was it all that it could have been? No, I don't think so. Because of the triple XP, because of how different the game was than it originally was designed, I think that that did take well, away from what you, yeah. or what my expectations might have been because of how you said the game was originally. Well, yeah, and that too, and even at that point, the lore is not, not misconstrued, but it's kind of gone. Like, it's been years since BC, so running through the Outlands... There's no point for you because we're not going to do in we're not going to do that in-game content. We're not going to go kill Illidan. We're not going to do those raids. And even when people do that, you know, they did that during BC. So you're not going to get a raid group that wants to do that shit. And that's sad because that sounds like a lot of awesome fun and stuff see, to do. And that's the like, problem that Rebecca and I had is that we were playing because we skipped so much. We I played vanilla, played the shit out of vanilla, and then I skipped BC. I played a little bit of Lich King. And then I played. I played a lot during Cataclysm, and then like I went back and killed the Lich King. I didn't get to do a lot of BC content, but I went back and did a lot of those key elements that I wanted to do. Like I knew the lore, so why not you know go finish those you know things? It's an incredible universe with lots of you know yeah. stories and lots of you know it is it's, it's it literally is its own world. Yeah. And I think that's sad that you know all it is about getting a certain fucking item, so you know I can do end game stuff you know it's like I want to play the game and have fun and learn about these stories like Brad you know I, I play games for stories the same reason and there are more stories in WoW than probably any other two video games combined and, that, and that's the shitty thing is well that, that's I didn't mean to cut you off but that's kind of what like I was shooting for you to do once you cap a character then you're free to go fucking do whatever you want you can go back and go do that stuff you can go back and do you know that's the thing like during Cataclysm the world changed so a lot of the older raid bosses were gone or some of the world was destroyed or you know things were altered so some of the stuff you saw is not what I saw in Vanilla in Lich King like the world literally changed what did my panda hit 88? Uh, no you hit 83 all 83? I suck panda what? what nah. class? Oh. you made a shaman was your Jernai <laughs> no you didn't you made a monk you start off with a monk. I start off as a panda monk thing. See, I think that's why me and you like Star Wars so much. The the Old Republic was the Lord was there. It was almost a single player with a great story. And when me and you did play together, because I understand that, I would just kind of stand there and let you read the lore, listen to it, whatever. And, and I knew the universe too, and I knew a lot right. of backstory and everything like that. So that's why I enjoyed it. Plus, it was my first MMO ever, and I think I was at Star Wars Vanilla, so before, yeah. you know, all the stuff happened, kind of like how you enjoyed WoW Vanilla. So uh, well, and that's the thing, too, is he, not to, you know, not to you know, say that he hates WoW, but he was he was a Final Fantasy fan, and I, I joined, jumped up Final Fantasy Eleven bandwagon to play with him, and it, it's apples to oranges. Like, the games were so different, and that's the hard thing now, is the differences, like, Final Fantasy and WoW had, and then, like, the differences between WoW and, like, Star Wars were minuscule, yeah. I felt. I mean, there, yeah, obviously, UI differences and just... You know, oh, they copied you. everything, of course. But, yeah. And that's the thing, too. Like, I watched a buddy of mine last night play Terra. Terra looks awesome. Fantastic graphics, and it just... It seems really good, but then it's hard for me because it's... It's WoW, because WoW is, like, the first. So, I... And that's the hard part. I always go back to... as a, It's a WoW reference. So, let's let's jump into Final Fantasy fourteen then, Brad. Let's do it now. Yeah. Uh, really good. Uh, other than... I'll start with my bitches, because there's, like, not really too big of a list, but a nice one. And hoes. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, fourteen came out this Tuesday. Uh, Square Enix did not expect it to be as popular, I guess, in America as it as has been. Uh, so the servers were overran. And when I say overran, I mean like so overran that the second day after launch, they stopped direct downloads. You cannot direct download the game for two weeks because it is just so ass-packed with people. The game is actually out, though. Yes, it is out. It's just you have to play. If you want to play right now, you have to buy a physical copy. From what I've heard, the PC version does not have a world queue yet. So you, you, it just tells you the world's full. Try another server. Cross. Whereas the PlayStation does. They do cross platform, yes. So if you, you are playing with PC people. Yep. They've always done that. Yeah, Final 11, Fantasy 11, 11 was actually yeah. the first one. That was PS2, PC, Xbox 360, and PS3 if you had a backwards compatible dealie. Uh, my other big gripe was I don't know who I should yell at more if it was Sony or Square Enix. Uh, my registration code, like any MMO, any type of PC game that we all know about, you know, you have to have your registration code so you can make your account. Uh, day one, I bought the $80 collector's edition, so I bought the nice, like the big nice box, crazy extra DLC, content, all that stupid shit. They were telling me my code wasn't valid, and I lost my shit, because uh, like it was telling me it did not exist. Aside from that, uh, I got it working that day of launch on this uh, last Tuesday. 
Got it installed. Took about four hours. That was with that was game installing, patch updates, everything. Not really that bad, uh, especially because I had just deleted all the content. If I'd have probably kept all my open beta stuff, it probably would have been way faster. Better but, uh, safe though to get all the new yeah. freshies. And that's what I figured. But uh, character customizing really good. Uh, crazy. I mean. I don't know how crazy detailed I know when I was going through because uh, I couldn't play up my main from the open access because uh, mid or whatever the server I'm on was completely packed. It's one of the top ones for the American list. So it's like one of the ones, you know, usually the top ones are ones people go to instantly because they're the top of the list. Do you get to pick your server? Yeah, you can pick your server in this one, which they did eventually do in 11. But when you first back when I first played 11, it was not you had to get a world key. Yeah. And uh, that meant you had a friend already that was playing the game. They bought an in-game world key game gave it to you and that's how you got in their world one question uh how much what is the cheapest you get into this obviously you bought the the game i think runs 39.99 for the standard edition 40 dollars for standard yeah. edition there are any free trials uh you get 30 day free subscription yes oh, and then, i mean you can't like download the game uh, nothing that i've seen now so you have to spend 40 bucks yep and then you get the first month for free first month for free and then and then if you want to pay after that from what i've heard because this is the weird part because uh i had early access because i I did did all the pre-order stuff like craziness technically like the first three days after launch i was still running on early access time so i didn't have to set up any payment plan Uh, i do know it's i think 14 bucks for a month my boss was telling me because he was setting it up for his pc uh, how it worked, what he looked at for the payment plans is it was 14 bucks for a month. You can either do 90 days for like 12, or you can do 180 days for 10. That's kind of standard. If you buy yeah. the bigger package, you get a little bit discount. But I'm assuming that it charges you for 180, 180 days worth of content, so you get charged for you know three, four months, whatever it is, at 10 bucks a piece. So it's 40 bucks. 40 bucks. Other than that, get into the game, uh, or the, I'll go back to the character customers. I almost forgot about it. Like I said, pretty detailed. Uh, I didn't really tool around with it too much during the beta because I was just wanting to play. But I made a human on the, my European server, and uh, I made his name Mondo Zap after Killer is Dead because the game is pretty amazing. So I like the name. It's now my main, or he's my second main. Uh, made a gladiator. The character customizing, though, when you go to like the faces, is actually, I think, where it unlocks all the different ways you can customize your character. Because I picked one of the, the first faces I picked was kind of like a younger guy. And all the noses were different, the mouth was different, the scars were different, the facial hair was different. I went back and picked the older dude who kind of looked like he was like from the like the wilds, like the woods, and he had like chops, all sorts of craziness, crazier scars. He was actually look bigger build wise. So I think it depends on what you pick face wise once you pick your race as to what you actually get to customizing. Uh, but other than that, like I said, pretty cool character customizing. Uh, the hair, I think, is the only thing they kind of sucked ass on, and the tattoos. But very Japanesey. Very Japanesey, but they, it feels like you're playing is you can just make the hair from every Final Fantasy game ever made, and just put it on your Thank character. Big you spikies. Yeah, like my my dude has like this weird fucking Zell haircut from Final Fantasy VIII, but it's pretty. Like I said, really cool. It, it looks a lot better than Eleven did. Getting into the game when you start, you pick uh, your class after you make your character. Uh, they have everything from Gladiator, Pugilist, which is kind of like a monk. Uh, Marauder, which is like a kind of like the warrior, was in Final Fantasy XI. There, you like barbarian, use two handed weapons a lot. Uh, then you have, I know I'm forgetting stuff, Archer, Lancer, and I feel like I'm missing another melee class. Whatever. And then you go. No Dragoon or Dark Well, that's, I'll get to that. Oh, okay. Uh, then you have, because there's uh, the Path of Warrior and the Path of Magic. And if you go to Path of Magic, you have uh, Conjurer, Therm- Thermantulus, or something like that, which is pretty much Black Mage. And then something with an A, and I cannot remember the damn name of it for the life of me. Uh, and how it works is how you get to Dragoon and like uh, uh, get a Paladin, all that stupid stuff in the game, is you have to level up certain jobs to certain levels. So like I'll get a White Mage when my Conjurer, or my conjurer hits like level 15 or something like that. I'll have the spec to go to the White Mage job class, uh, or I'll unlock skills to it. Uh, and then Dave was telling me today, like to be a Bard, you have to have uh, what was it? Crap. I think it was like a gladiator and scholar, or one of the spell classes. And I didn't know that. Like, there's certain ones that you have to mix and combine things to actually unlock. Lancer unlocks dragoon. So you can go like warrior and path of magic. Yeah, it's and end up being like a dark knight. Well, it's just like Final Fantasy XI. There's no like your characters aren't locked into one role. You make right. a character, and your character can do every job class. It's really based around what weapon's in your hand. If you use the weapon that's meant for 
a war or not a warrior but a gladiator you're gonna be whatever level gladiator you are like it, it keeps your gladiator like all your jobs are their own levels their own levels that's how 11 was and 11 you had your monk could be 52 i had a dragoon at 38 i had uh yeah. my warrior was 27 like i had so many different i hopped around a lot i played red mage up to like 37 38 i played white mage to 29 i played black mage to 24 and it was all on one character oh, that was one of my favorite one, things all on one character because it was all in 11 you went to your mog house and then you changed and you always had to go to a city so it was kind of aggravating 14 they made it where it's on the fly you just literally switch your weapon and you can switch your class like that uh, it's still also from my understanding because i haven't gotten too incredibly far into the game because i've been rather busy this week uh, seeing all this stuff coming out, working video game retail, I've been crazy hectic with work. I've heard that you can splice comp, like uh, job classes together to where you can like make hybrids of them. So it's still like Final Fantasy XI in the sense of you have a main job and a sub job that you can always run around and use. Uh, but combat, gameplay, uh, in comparison to XI, it is like them actually trying to help you enjoy playing their MMO this time instead of, we're going to throw you into this crazy-ass world and not tell you what to do. Good tutorial uh, then. Great tutorial. Uh, how it works is literally right when you get off, like you do a cutscene once you make your character for whatever city you go to. Uh, my understanding, because I've done two different cities, it's kind of the same generic cutscene. You see different guards, you see different monsters attack those guards. Uh, but once you get into the city, pops up a little thing for hints. You hit select, it'll put your uh, cursor on it. And right then you can click on the thing and say no tips. Or you can just, you know, exit out and every time something new pops like when it tells you about missions when it tells you about where how to find people using the map how to open the map how equipment works how you know the uh, auction house works there's a t it literally pops a tutorial menu for every one of those when you find out about link shells it pops and tells you about link shells uh, and it's very nice because like i said in final fantasy 11 there was a very big lack of that it was literally i played that game for three years and the first year was me just running around using classes and leveling them up playing with people and people slowly teaching me how to play the game uh, like i said this one it, it really is nice to have some like the what it feels like the company helping you out being like all right we're not going to leave you completely in the dark uh i heard the game caps at 50 which is kind of low seeing it's a final fantasy game but i know we'll probably see uh dlc probably sometime around next year because it is coming out for the ps4 Okay, so I was going to ask about that. I was actually just going to write that down. You're playing it on the PS3. Will you have to pay another 40 bucks, pay a transfer thing to pay, play it on your PS4? Or? No. It's oh. just like PC. If I wanted right now, I could go buy a PC copy. If I had a PC at my house, I could play it and upload my account and it plays like nothing. You can transition. But you will have to buy the game another 40 bucks. Well, yeah, I'd have to buy the game again. Don't get me wrong. It does suck. But why? this is the reason I say I think we'll see the expansion for 14 next year is because a they'll have to re-release it for final fan for ps4 uh, so when they do that why not do the expansion you slap collector's edition on it you know or you say you know combo pack you get the original game with the expansion anybody that's upgrading it's not gonna bitch like myself that's awesome like all right i'm getting the expansion that i gotta buy anyways for my ps3 so if you're impatient you want to play it now you get a ps3 Maybe Justin and I are like, eh, you know, we're playing a little WoW. Maybe we'll wait for them to work the bugs out, give the expansion. We go ahead and wait and get the PS4 version here in a few months or whatever. Well, no, you're, you, it's going to be a little while still. It's, it's going to be sometime later next year you'll see the PS4 oh, okay. version. Spring. Possibly. Might, maybe even later. might be Fall. around holiday. Like it, it might be like this time next year we see it. Oh, wow. So, and that's my thing. Like, if you are a Final Fantasy fan, if you've played Eleven and you, you, you enjoyed Eleven, then you should definitely be playing Fourteen right so now. Square Enix is banking that the PS4 is a flop then because they need people to study on their PS3s. Now, a lot no, of people are going to trade not, in for they're bonuses, not even right? banking that. No, the only reason this game was made on the PS3 was because oh, Square Enix promised that they were making this game and they said they were not going to lie to their fans. It's the only reason it's not being pushed back for PS4. This is like a re-release, isn't it? This it is. That is been out. Well, that's why it's called a Realm Reborn. It right. is literally, and it explains to you that the original Realm was destroyed by a meteor. There's this big epic battle. It's a cutscene. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> it explains in very good detail. I bought the collector's edition, so I got like an extra four-hour DVD with it. And I actually watched like about an hour and a half of it. And it's like all CG storytelling of about the original realm or the original Final Fantasy XIV realm. It tells you a lot of the story, which I did play the original XIV, and it was atrocious, but I did play it. Is that why some of the shits named different? Like Mithras aren't Mithras, but in fourteen they were called Mithras. Well, no, or did in they fourteen start? they were called something different. But okay. in fourteen, like the original fourteen, there were no male cat people. The male Mithra didn't exist. 
So when they changed their names, it was nice because they added guys to those. Like, you didn't have female ga- Gallic. Yeah. Now they have the female Gallics, which are, like, the big uh, ape-looking guys. Uh, but other than that, I mean, like I said, the main reason it didn't get pushed back till PS4 was because they told us this game was coming out five years ago. Five years ago is when this was promised to be released on the PS4 or the PS3. That's when it was announced, and they said it would be a year and a half to two years till it came out. It only released on PC and tanked because it was so bad. And they all they did instead of scrapping it was take it back, fixed it. And it literally is. It is completely fixed. I love the game. It is 10 times, like, 14 originally played, like, original 11. It was, like, stupid aggravating. So my dad has Final Fantasy 14. Does he have to rebuy it? Yes. It's not the original game. It's a new game. It's, it's like just... It, 14's dead. <clears throat> it's gone. But they don't, like, give you a discount well, or anything. Nope. No, it's a, it's a new game. It's just like WoW doesn't give you a discount when you buy sure, the next expansion. Right. Guild Wars isn't going to do it either. I mean, they're going to get yeah, you for their money. Yeah, because they screwed it up so bad. They might. No, the thing is, though, is if you have a legacy account, like if he played 14 back in the day, mm-hmm. like I played 14 back in the day, I have a legacy account. I don't know what all true extras I get from it. They say it'll, you'll find out more as the game progresses, but I know that I have legacy status in the, in, on my servers and for my characters, which is pretty awesome because I did play the original 14. I, he probably got asked to play the beta for this one because all legacy members, we got uh, stage 2 beta access. I didn't. You didn't play 14 on original PC. Yes, I did. I don't remember you playing 14 with your PC. My computer couldn't run it. I downloaded it from you. I got the copy and paid for it. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Fucking oh. didn't see me a fucking code. Let's go uh, into the uh, speed round of questions here on Final Fantasy XIV so we can move on. Um, how's the look of the game? Is it basically the same as the other one? Oh, no. Completely cleaned up. Looks very good. Uh, don't get me wrong. The PC version does look better. <clears throat> the PS4 version will be on par graphically. That's the main thing I'm looking forward to for the PS4 version is because they've already shown screenshots and all that from it, and they say it is literally graphically on par, same game as the PC but uh, no, for the PS3, I mean, it looks, it still looks amazing. I mean, it looks as good as Final Fantasy XIII, the actual single player game. I mean, it is just as on par as that title. So. Yeah, gameplay. I meant not the. I mean, I mean, gameplay, cinematics, all of it. I'm saying the game looks no different than any new Final Fantasy game you would play. Awesome. It is not like graphically inferior. What's the size of the world? What do you mean? Like how like, big is it? Yeah. I really haven't explored too much. I, like I said, I only got like uh, my max characters fourteen, so uh, I haven't gone venturing too far out from uh my homelands because it, it's pretty goddamn terrifying there's some big ass monsters out there in this one so how does the is it real time fighting like final fantasy 12 well not really it's it's live it's like the the time i guess yeah you would say live action because it's or is it roll the dice like wow it's it's kind of roll the dice because it's gonna numeric it's roll the dice no it's straight roll the dice let me say that how it plays is more like i'd say it honestly kind of feels more like wow and how it plays because uh they hotkeyed a lot of stuff for the console version in this one to where your R2 and L2. If anything, it actually kind of feels more like DC Universe now that I'm thinking about it. I was going to ask you if it's it, close to the DC yeah, Universe. Because you hit R2 and it gives you triangle, X, square, circle, up, down, left, right. And those are all your R2 hotkeys. You hit L2 and there's all those hotkeys. If, you hit, uh, if you're holding R2 and hit, like, select, you can change, like, there's different, like, eight different hotkey setups for each uh, L2 and R2. So you can technically have, like, 16 setups. And I don't think you probably even really need it because the skills aren't too crazy like out there right now. I mean, there's a good bit of skills all the way up to 50, but it, it does look like you'll kind of get burned out on it fast. Is there? This is what my concern was, and I didn't really see it in the DC universe when I played that. Is are there moves that are situational? Like in WoW, you have to be behind a target. Oh yeah, to do I, a dispatch. I, I, no, I was like telling that. you about that the other day though when we were uh, playing it. Like uh, I played Gladiator because during the beta, I only played uh, Conjurer and uh, Thermon- Thermopolis or Thermantulus or whatever it is, the Black Mage and White Mage uh, bottom skill trees. But when I played the uh, open, or when I got my game, I made uh, my European server, my Mondo's app, and my Gladiator. How it works is like there's certain attacks. Like when I started playing, you would like I do this one uh, like like pretty much like heavy strike more or less. And when I played further and got further better with uh, a couple levels in, I unlocked my next skill, and it was actually a combo off of that. When you hit him with heavy strike, then you get dotted lines that spin around it, telling you that it's you know it's ready once it queues up. You hit that, and it combos off of it, and it does a stronger attack. I don't know if you can stack it yet, though. That's the thing I'm more curious about. Another thing, too, when it comes to, like I was saying with that, like, you move with the left stick so you can hold L2 running around the character yeah. and be attacking. That was kind of my thing. Like, you're not just stationary attacking. Oh, no, you Lock move the on. entire time. Like, it locks on? Yeah, you, 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 when you're strafing. moving around, yeah, you can you strafe around. You're locked on to whatever target you're fighting. You, like, don't get me wrong. If you want to switch targets, I think you end up having to let off the thing to deep at it. 
but it's usually not that bad. Like that's I probably, was, that's I was pretty intuitive. Yeah, because I, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. There's because I've done the the beginning game instances when you're like when you hit like level nine, ten. There's a, one of the main quests is you get sent off to go run more or less a one man instance because uh, two AI characters from the, the actual story for the game come along and help you. And uh, the one I did, you have to fight this big tree ant, and uh, it's this big tree ant, and then there's like four or five other ones that are with it, but they're like weaker versions of him, and like. Switching between them, I had no problem with it. I mean, I was using my spellcaster at that time, like so. I was like hitting with uh, stone and water gun and all that stuff. So you are controlling only one character, character, yes? Because I mean, most Final Fantasies you had a party. Well, no, well, that's the whole thing. That's the whole point of the MMOs for Final Fantasy was is is that you play with other people. They make your party. So you do go into groups? Yes, I haven't been in too many of them. I played in more group when I was in the open beta because I had a friend of mine that literally he ran every character to twenty the level cap. For for the beta just so when the game came out he didn't have to do it again like there's all sorts of like quick uh like they call them fates and uh he was the person who first showed them to me because i really didn't know, understand it when you're in the open world it'd be a big blue dot or sometimes an orange dot and those are the only two colors i've seen and if you run into them it gives everyone that's in that area the same general quest like you might have to kill this monster you might need to help them pick up this or you might need to go do this and once you guys all everybody completes it you know helps complete it as long as you were there and actually contributed, like you didn't just walk in on the last second and they complete it, you'll get experience for it. That's the aggravating thing. Is you, the worst the worst feeling in the world in that game is when you run to a fate and you get there and they fucking finish it as you step in and you're like, I ran all the way here. Like Defiance or Rift. Yeah, it like has that. That, that set up with it. And I, I've, I know in Defiance it's like that. I didn't know in Rift, but it's it's nice. It's a nice way to get because you end up finding more people to play with that way. Uh, but there was, during the first week of gameplay, there was one of them, like, this one fate uh, spot. Like, there was, like, four or five fates, and literally it felt like there was 60 of us just in this these spots. We, we would beat one, and the next one pop, and you just saw 60 dudes, to, like, their characters all just hoofing it across the land of the next fate. It's kind of awesome, but it was kind of at the same time, you're, like, running with them, you're like, I don't even know if I should keep doing this now. So, is there Gil? What's the money system? Yes, it's Gil. Yeah! It's Gil. It's, it sticks to Final Fantasy in that one. That's awesome. Is this sort of like Star Wars, where it's 80% single player, and they, it feels like the multiplayer almost was tacked on? Uh, no. No, okay. God, no. It's it's multiplayer, believe me. The beginning of the game, yes, it's single player just like how, like, WoW would be. Like, you can play a good bit of WoW kind of by yourself at the beginning. Uh, Final Fantasy 14 feels like Final Fantasy 11 in the sense of as you get higher level like once you go over 10 if you die your gear gets it takes damage from it your durability goes down you still lose experience you lose experience yeah like Ooh, oh, yeah, it's one of them things that makes dick. you you, you fucking that is you don't just in rush into battle into that game you think about it like if something says like they can whoop your team's ass you might sit there and be like eh, we might not want to pick on that right now uh, the storyline though it does have voice acting I told you I thought it would. Yeah, it does have voice acting for the main, like, story arc parts. Uh, cool. Like, the one instances that I've ran for the two different worlds I've started in. Uh, both characters that have come up for those little cutscenes for the instances have had full-blown conversations, so it was nice. One thing, and I, and I kind of wonder if WoW has it, too. In Star Wars, we had a lot of flashpoints, dungeons, that were pretty constant. Like, level 15, you got a dungeon. Level 25, you got a dungeon to... Yeah. Every once in a while you got one, but Guild Wars doesn't have that, which I find it does. It's That's like level weird. 35 is the first one, and I guess you can't do it unless you have a whole bunch of people and you have to have a few level 50s, and it's much... I like level 100s. Like, <laughs> what? Well, you guys are both doing this. <laughs> <laughs> they're both like measuring their hands out like they're measuring their dicks or something. Well, like, that was my favorite part of Star Wars, and that's... His hands. His let's hands. do our hands together. No one can see this. Like, it's it's hilarious. <laughs> we need to do this. We need a video podcast. Wait, does it have? Does well, it have that? Does WoW have that? The way they do it in WoW is you have to hit a certain level. Like the you won't. Yeah. You can't do a dungeon to level fifteen. And then you have dungeons that there's like three dungeons that you do level fifteen to twenty five. Mm -hmm. Like there's three dungeon sets for that. Then after twenty five, you'll get twenty five to thirty five. That's exactly there's five sets of dungeons yeah. for that. Yeah. I'm sure Final Fantasy does. I just haven't got I far enough so. into it. This, I'm pretty I don't remember if Eleven game. did. I didn't see. No, any. Eleven had instances. It was just they were aggravated they were and they level. were really sp 
but right out, yeah. Like, you didn't see an instance in uh, Final Fantasy XI until, I think, like, close to 20 when you went to the city where you got the Chocobo license to ride your Chocobo. Oh, that's the other thing I wanted to talk about. Yeah, the uh, Chocobos. The Chocobos are the shit. Uh, the mounts in this game are ridiculous. You get, uh, obviously, you get your Chocobos, or Chocobos, whatever you want to call them. Uh, with the collector's edition, you get uh, behemoth armor for them. It's half the reason I bought oh, the collector's yeah. edition. Yeah, looks beast mode. It does. I tried to buy it, and they were out of pre-order. Yeah. The, then you get uh, you actually also got a coral mount, which is like the weird tiger things. Kind of looks like Cheetor from uh, Beast Wars. Kind of like that. So I'm looking forward to using it. Uh, the thing that won me over those because I'm a big Final Fantasy VI nerd, obviously, with my sprite and all that. You actually get magic tech armor. The suits, the big armor things that used to ride in Final Fantasy VI and using combat, they are mounts in the game. Uh, Dave came across two guys hoofing about in them, and he said they're enormous. And That's I cannot awesome. wait. I am literally, like, so gung-ho on, like, kinda, I must have Magitek. kind of hating to hear about this game because I want it. <laughs> literally, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm sure Next there are time. people out there hating on it, but I'll tell you this. There can't be many because it is literally... Uh, no one, I've, no stores I know have been keeping it in stock. It's flying off the shelves. Nobody can keep it in, and everyone I know that's played it loves it. No one's played it and been like, oh, that game was horrible. Like everybody started to play it and they're like, I really like it. If you want to play Final Fantasy XIV, Brad, his name is, and he's Not on server. You. Honestly, I can't pronounce him. <laughs> I know uh, I'm, I got Mondo Zappa. I just don't remember what my European server is. Why are you playing on European yeah, server? It was well, the first for... night I couldn't get on a U.S. server for the life of me. They were all full. Yeah, and I, I hate the fact I made Mondo Zappa because I got my, he's actually like I think level twelve gladiator or ten gladiator something like that. I love the character, and I'm like I don't want to play on this damn European server anymore. So you play a whole bunch of English dudes, and Irish guys. Yeah, well, at least you know they're all typing Amer- like English, so it's like read them what they're fucking saying. French dudes and Germans are gonna hate yeah. you. So you have a level 12 gladiator. If you want to start playing a mage, do you have to go back to level 1 area? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank but don't get much. me wrong, though. There there are times, like, I know in 11, I don't know how if it works in such a sense in 14. I'm pretty sure it does because I, I remember my buddy doing it with me when we were partied up. But uh, I know you could uh, power level people in 11. Like, say, like, uh, me and Justin were playing, or we, any of us were playing, and you had a low character, and I had a level 75 white mage. We could go somewhere where, like, the monsters at least wouldn't hit you in one hit and kill you. Like, they might hit you three times and then you die. But go somewhere to where it would take you maybe 15, 20 minutes to kill the one weak-ass monster you're fighting in comparison to me. But your one kill on it would get you a level. But I would be there sitting there the whole time. Every time you got close to dying, cure. 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 It was just always hard to, like, you had to pay people out absurd amounts of guild to get them to power level you in that game you'd if you didn't have friends. in Final Fantasy XI out in the dunes. You'd see yep. Yeah fucking ass tons of people doing that in Valkroom dunes. dunes man you always like it, the best parties in that game I ever got into the ones I love the most is when you had somebody who had their level 75 friend with them just running around healing everybody it's like oh we're gonna have fun tonight this is gonna be an easy time that's as far as I got in Final Fantasy 11 was the dunes the dunes the dunes, <laughs> the, the dunes if you made it out of the dunes in 11 you would continue playing that game if you could not get out of the dunes, like if that's where you got and you quit playing, you would never touch that game again in your life because you're Apparently. like, fuck that game. My dad plays it to this day. Yeah, they don't do it. Believe me, <laughs> there's still a huge server base for the 11. All right, well, thank you, Brad, for Final Fantasy 14. 40 bucks, subscription fee, PS3 Wait, or PC version? Uh, It depends. If you're a hardcore PC gamer, then go PC. I mean, that way you get the better graphical end of it. Uh, if you're a devout console gamer like myself, I say buy it on the console. It's well worth it. All right, cool. Jacob, tell us about Spelunky probably the most stressful indie game I've ever played. Where'd you get it? It uh, I got it from... I got it off Steam. You play Mountain Humble Bundle? Yet? Hmm? You play Mountain Your Friend yet? That is really? a super stressful... Super stressful yeah, game. Yeah, Brad was talking about it before. We were waiting for you guys forever. Um, Humble Bundle game or just bought it on Steam? I want to say I just bought it on Steam. How much? Ten, I think. Okay. Holy shit, you dished out ten dollars for a game. I think it's ten, but I think I only paid five for it. He paid. He bought payday too. Yeah. Full price. I did. Was it a humble, humble bundle thing? No. <laughs> Spelunky. Is, the way I like to describe it is, if Mario was sitting down watching Indiana Jones, this is what it would look like. There's even there's collectibles. It's a roguelike game. So when you die, you go back to the beginning of the world. But the uh, the object of the game is to collect the treasure in the level and get to the end. You can do things like rescuing the damsel, and if you do that, if you get her to the end, you get a, you gain a health. That's the only way you can gain health. Um, you start off with four hearts. You get hit by something, you lose a heart. Is it 2D side-scroller yes, platformer? 2D side-scroller platformer. 
which uh, I'm pretty comfortable with platformers. In this game, I haven't got past level four. Are you using a controller on your PC? Mm hmm. Oh, okay. You can, I I started using keyboard, but I'm just better with controller, especially with side scrollers. Yeah, because if you're trying to use the uh, the uh, arrow keys in a space bar to jump and stuff, that would probably be pretty tough. Yeah, and you gotta use Z to, to no, speed to jump. or something. It was shift to run faster and Z to jump. That's why point and click and first person shooters are the only games that are worth a fuck on a PC. Yes. But now I have a controller, so. <laughs> yeah, get a 360 wired controller, plug that bitch in. Wireless. Yeah. Oh, you have a yeah, wireless adapter? Yeah, they have adapter. an adapter. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's cool. Um, yeah. Hmm. I love it. it. He's a rich bitch. Got all the cool toys. All right, go ahead. Sure. Ballin'. Ballin'. Yeah, it's a roguelike, so when you die, you start at the beginning. You start at 1 1. Um, I believe if you get to the second world, you still would start at 2-1. I haven't got that far, because this game is absolutely frustrating. You start off with your whip, which is your basic attack. You start off with bombs and ropes. The levels are completely destructible, so you can put a bomb down and go into the next part of the level. What if you put a bomb on the floor to blow up and fall through and die? Yeah, because if you fall too far, you take damage. The bomb will damage you. Um, the other night, there's little rocks you can use to throw to set off traps to kill things, little pebbles. And I dropped a bomb, and there was a rock there. And I'm going to go pick up the rock, but instead of picking up the rock, he picked up the bomb and I ran away from the bomb, holding on to it. <laughs> I didn't realize I was holding it. I was like, crap, threw it, dead. Couldn't throw it far enough. There's Is this Super Nintendo graphics? It's a bit better. It's, it's artful. Artful. Yeah, it... Could have been on a Super Nintendo, I'd say so. Jaguar? Genesis, maybe? I don't know. It 32X? Looks nice. It looks nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's lots of enemies. There's uh, spiders that jump around. They don't jump in one arc. They'll jump in lots of different arcs, so you don't really know where they're going. They might jump a little bit. They might jump a lot. Um, they might attach themselves to the ceiling. Those are the little spiders. There are giant spiders you have to keep jumping on their head. The spiders that uh, attach themselves to the ceilings and will come down on a string and they shoot spider webs that will make you stuck. There's dry bones from Mario. There's dry skeleton. bones in it? Yes, dry bones is in it. It's absolutely dry bones. And the thing about that is you can use the skulls to set off traps and kill things. So you gotta kinda inch yourself towards it and see if it gets up. Like, I just quick. imagine, like, Mario level, uh, like, for Super Mario, like, you know, we didn't go down to the caves. I imagine that with, like... You mean um, 1, 2? No, the uh, Super Mario World, when you would go down to the caves. I can't remember what levels Oh, were. yes, okay, okay. Those cave levels. And that's what I imagine this, but a little bit darker. Yeah. And I imagine him with, like, an Indiana Jones skin. Yeah. Like, that's, that's exactly, exactly what I imagine. You should look up screenshots in a second. Well, there's snakes, there's spitting cobra, cobras, and uh, there's, like, village people that run around. You can, I don't think you can kill them, because I've hit them, and they just get knocked out. It's oddly realistic, because you have spikes that will kill you, but if you walk directly up to them, you can just walk right past them. Um, stuff like, you know, like I said, setting the, the traps off with the rocks. Um. <laughs> Dude, I wouldn't even pay attention, I was looking at what... <laughs> what happened? I said setting the traps off with the rocks, and for some reason I thought I switched it, but I didn't. You can use skulls, and you can actually use little rats to set the traps off. Apparently, is this a remake? Yes. Okay, because I, I, I think it's I, a remake of an indie game. I, say, I know it's on the PlayStation Marketplace right now. I've been, I was looking at it the other day thinking about buying it, because I just was like, I was like, what's that? I was like, oh. And I, I came to the same conclusion, though, because the cover art for it, it looks like Mario in Indiana Jones costume. This one, it just looks like a, a guy that looked like he looks like he's dressed like Mario. He's like, oh, he's in like overalls, and he has just a mining hat. There's lots of different characters. There's unlockable skins. There's even um, you can be a girl. Yeah, you can be Meat Boy from Super Meat Boy. You can be Van Helsing. You That's what I think. This looked like a cross between was like Indiana Jones and Super Meat Boy. That's what it looked because you're because you're just bit. like a little tiny square yeah. sprite. Uh, but they even go to yeah. the extent of Indiana Jones that every once in a while when there's a lot of snakes in the level, it'll pop up a little thing and says snakes. I hate snakes. Um, there's golden, like a gold little, uh, like in the Indiana Jones movie when he takes that gold piece off and the, the stone ro rolls after him. I'm going to mention that in that's, my game too. That's, that's what it does. You like you pick it that. up and he like screen shakes and the thing just, <gasps> vroom, 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 just destroys the screen and it destroys the level. So it'll actually, if you use it right, open up new parts of the level. Uh, but it will kill you instantly. So you have to run. 
Um, there's a shopkeeper. You can buy things like the climbing gloves, which uh, you can jump, hold a ball, jump. So does a giant ball chase you? Yes. <laughs> that's the name of the episode. Um, giant balls chasing you. Come on, that's funny. It's not. I didn't laugh. <laughs> um, you can buy I'll things. Stab you. I'm so sleepy, I don't know why. Stab you in the throat. I wish you were. Oh, stop yawning, bitches. I can't help it, man. I'm tired. Leave me alone. I'm nodding off. Like, my eyes are getting heavy. I'm like, ah. I'm so hungry. I'm not saying you're I'm boring. <laughs> I only have, like, four hours of sleep. <laughs> yeah, I'm um, boring. I asshole. got three hours of sleep. I got, like, it's eight. It's not a pissing contest, guys. Let's just have a fucking nap. We're going to end this now, guys. We're just going to take a power nap at the store before we all go home. We can go to bed. Except for Emsa. He's going to continue talking. Have fun. I will. I'll just do my... I'll just do the rest <laughs> myself. This is now a one-man show. I'm a one-man band. I'm good. Go three hours sleep, man. Yeah, you can, uh, just, the one thing you can buy for the vendor I like is a jar of glue, so when you throw your bombs, it'll stick to whatever it is. Normally you would just drop it or how, throw how it. How do you get money? Uh, there's treasure all throughout the level. So you use your treasure to buy more items? Yeah. Um, I always think it was weird when games that have, like, a treasure system, or not a treasure, but, like, a currency, like, in, like, Metal Gear, like, I always thought it was, like, because they have, like, a weird, like, uh, it's in Metal Gear 4 where you, um, the guy that... It's the, arms, out, the arms dealer, goddammit, I'm tired, I'm sorry. Like, I would just shoot that guy and take his stuff. Like, you're in a, you're in a cave, well, splunking, I'd kick that dude's ass and just take his stuff. Like, I wouldn't pay for anything. But you'll be like, no, oh, you're stealing, and he just, he's super fast and he's got a shotgun. <laughs> Alright, well that makes sense. <laughs> hey, they covered that base, I'm quite impressed. Fallout, you robbed everybody, didn't you? I hated Fallout, so no, I didn't. Fallout hates you. Go I ahead, didn't, I didn't realize where the vendor was, because I didn't realize you can... Crouch down, and then the camera will move down, so you can see what's coming. And I put a bomb down and blew up the level, and I, and all of it pops up. You terrorist! And he <laughs> runs out of his little shop. Al Qaeda! <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? Yeah, there's, there's some pretty, pretty funny, funny moments in the game. There's lots of different worlds. There's a jungle world, an ice world. I saw the ice world. world. That one looks awesome. Yeah. How's there, there's a mothership. How is there a jungle world? Like, if Splunking is caves... There's something... There's a story to it. There's okay. something with the caves. I, I didn't see that when I looked up the screen. Because he says... You play through at the beginning as Yang, which is the tutorial, and he says, like, you know, I keep going through the caves, and I wake up, and I'm at the beginning again. He's stuck in... He's stuck in this loop. So there's I'm some kind of magic. It's like Groundhog's Day, but you're stuck in a cave? Yeah. It'd be awful. And there's even a mothership level, which is how you get the, the robot... Yeah, there's lots of different characters, like I said. I have Meat Boy, Van Helsing, Cyclops, Robot. Um, there's fat people. Like a Cyclops or a Cyclops from X-Men? Cyclops. A Cyclops. Okay, oh, all right. Little yellow guy. Pretty insanely difficult. Like I said, I think I passed a little four. <gasps> um, one neat thing about it is it has that Diablo random... Every time you play it, it's random. Level one? Level one one no, level is not easy. Lower gener uh, or generation is what he's talking about. You start off with a difficult game. It doesn't get... Per well, I think it does get progressively harder. But just every level is difficult. Um, if you take too long, a ghost shows up. A giant ghost. Is he a purple? Big you. purple ghost? I'll say it's all on here. There's like a big purple ghost. But how I've only seen it as white. Oh, either way. But like, what is the correlation with the ghost? Like, there's just random shit in the game. It seems very pretty. There's it a seems journal. Really there's a journal that, that explains a lot of things. It seems very random. Is there a timer on each level? Not that it shows you. That's, I think, kind of one of the difficult things of it is some levels there's a shorter timer, but it doesn't tell you. That's stupid. Um, it's it's supposed to be an insanely difficult game, like Rogue Legacy, Hotline Miami, stuff like that. Just, How many hours you put in it? You said that's all you've been about, playing. I probably put about fifteen hours into it this week. And, and you, you couldn't beat it. Now I get your best level four. One four. Did One you four. I'm gonna go and buy this for PlayStation. It's and wreck hard. the shit out of it tonight. <laughs> it's gonna savage its insides. Sure. Yeah, take a knife, split it from poo hole to goo hole. Yeah, <laughs> just tear it up. Like, but I don't play a lot of platformers. I'm comfortable with them. I play Mario and Rayman. So is, that, is that a is that a platformer? Are those considered platformers? I mean, can, I, I, I'd probably toss, toss up the platforming style game. They're platformers. It reminded me, honestly, from what I looked at from the screenshots, it kind of looked like a Dig Dug type Bomberman type game. Except that's Bomberman was always, you know, you were on a flat plane looking down at yeah. it. But it's still, that's what it, the screenshot reminded me of. Dig Dug, Dig Dug and Bomberman. Dig Dug. That makes Bomberman. sense. Like but it did look like Indiana Jones, but Mario. Mario and Indiana. It, it's more like just its own thing, because it is pretty kind of difficult to describe. It's, it's, it's been on the main page for the PlayStation uh, store. 
for like the last week. So I, 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 like I said, when you said that's what it was, I didn't realize it until I saw it wrote out on your thing, and I was like, that's the game I've been looking at for the last week, debating on buying myself. How much is it? I want to say it's fifteen bucks. It might be ten bucks. Holy fuck! Fifteen or ten, yeah. I think that's a lot, though. That's what you're talking. I say it might be ten bucks. I had I really hadn't checked. I just kept seeing it on there, and I remember reading an article in a Game Informer about it. It's worth it. It's like you know, like we were talking that one time you go to a movies and it's like eight bucks because you get two three hours. I got fifteen hours out of it so far. I'm gonna keep playing it. I think it's worth ten bucks, fifteen bucks. Cool. But let's say someone's experienced. Like let's say Imsa from his time in the eighties. Like could he run through the game and kill it in? I don't think Three so. Three hours? I personally don't think so. I think, challenge I, I think that's really a challenge. I think I think that's a challenge. Right. That's that's a physical challenge. This is a double dare, bitch. Is it on 360? Or just PS3? I have no idea. It's. I think it's, it's on, on both. P- I think the article I read on it was a 360 review. So if it's 10 bucks, I'll I'll buy it. I'll try it. I'll see if I can kill it. If it's 15, now. <laughs> Fifteen dollars is steep for a game. No, it is. I'm not. I agree. I would it's, it's amazing how much that can make a difference. Fourteen ninety nine to nine ninety nine. <laughs> that's a huge difference. It's five that's, bucks. That's a gallon and a half of gas. That is my Big Mac meal. Yeah, that's your Big Mac meal. All right, anything else? No. All right, so we're gonna throw down and. and uh, Brad and I are going to tear this game to shit if it's 10 bucks. I'm going to take the Splunky Challenge. I'm going to take the Splunky <laughs> Challenge. Uh, real quick before I get into my main game, Justin and I did try to play a little bit of Payday 2 because we got it uninstalled and we tried playing it. I don't want to be negative, Nancy, but I think... IMSA was not fucking happy. IMSA was not all. happy. I did not enjoy really anything. Although I will preface this with, I could see how if all four of us got down and played together that it would be an awesome time and you could have a lot of fun with this game. It does not hold your hand. There's basically no tutorial whatsoever. I did not like that. It took us... We're pretty good video game guys, pretty smart, and it took us a while to figure out how to get a multiplayer match going, which was kind of ridiculous. No, they their multiplayer setup was fucking retarded. It's, it's really dumb. Atrocious. It really is. Uh, that was one of my biggest complaints about it was that and the servers back then but I don't know that that I know they had a patch fix for I don't know if you guys had problems so anyway it just my, it my was, I couldn't we couldn't find a game like you know if you go to the the crime net you go to the crime net and it has that little blip that would yeah. show you things and then they disappear like I go to one to try to click on it and it disappear well the thing was is I couldn't like I it wouldn't leave his name up. It would blip, like, it would blip his name, and then he would disappear, and I'm like, where the fuck is he now? And then he'd be over here, and then he'd be over here. Like, it never sat. Even when I played with Jared, he did not sit. The blip would change. He would move. And I kept moving him around the map, trying to find a blip that didn't have anybody else there, and finally one popped up that wasn't too difficulty, that wasn't, you know, too neat, you know, a lot of them popped up, and it was had the difficulty meter it said like medium already i'm like well this is gonna be our very first match you know i don't want to go and get owned i want to have fun so i finally find one that's easy and we get the game set up and get in and all we had was glitchy problems all we had were problems with the problems people guys disappearing uh the two ai was the dumbest ai i have seen in a video game in the last 10 years they would do nothing Bad, or not bad guys, I guess, but the, the the cops would just instantly appear. They would all sit there and they would stare at each other. And then when I walked around a quarter, they all started to start shooting. Like nothing was going on until I appeared. It was just people were going popping in and out of walls. Just we had tons of problems. They were bigger meat shields than Uncharted. First uh, answer to your whole shitstorm there is you played on fucking easy, you goon. It's not a game to be played on easy. It's a game to play on difficulty. It's not an easy game. Easy, you know what's going to give you? Idiots that fucking stand in front of you and wait for you to come out to shoot or you shoot them. But I don't think we had it set on easy. We were just doing one of the easier missions. Still, if it's the star rating, believe me, it's based off that. If it's not a bunch of stars and it said easy or like one of the lower difficulty settings, it's a joke. It's not even worth playing. But they didn't. They I feel like I, I have to play easy. this with you guys. Like they're... It's one star. We didn't play a one star. We played like a four star. We even well, still, depending on the heist and all that. Yeah. The characters, was, though, the reason was, the guys yeah. weren't doing anything, you have to hit R2. Granted, it does not explain this to you when you play the game. Okay. Yeah, I was, uh, telling, I was, it, like, yeah, I was like, you got to make them come yeah, to you, you and shit. Like I that. didn't know that for like the first week. My buddy Jared was like, hey, you hit R2, and that's how you, if the, no one's playing with us, because we always have found four people to play. Because my buddy Jared knows a shit ton of people that play Payday. So anytime I've ever played, I'm usually four people deep all the time. Yeah, definitely. And and Justin said that later he played and he didn't have any of the glitchy problems. He had four people and it was yeah, a lot like, of fun. Like you guys talking about that's like spawning randomly. I'd never had that issue. Well, that ever. was the weird thing is we were playing like literally like I was standing there because we did we did the mission with 
the uh, art heist. The art heist. You had to take the art off the wall. You guys did like one of the hardest fucking missions yeah. in the game. That was art actually heist. pretty fun though. Yeah, yeah but, well, it, that was but the it's, thing. It wasn't hard in the fact of like getting the art out or hacking the thing. It was hard from the sense of like I would be by the door because once you know how you open up the one security you, room. I I I, ha I, uh, I drilled the door. Then you had to hack the security to open mm -hmm. the bars. If they like, killed power, you have to go turn the power on. They never, turn. they never killed the power, which I thought was funny. Okay. We all four of us were sitting in there, and then all of a sudden, a fucking cop would spawn in there, and it'd be like, "What the fuck?" Like in, like they like, throw a smoke bomb, and then he would like glitch in, like he didn't show him running in. He appeared in the center of the room with and us. And then he would he would shoot back into the other room. Or what would happen was you would just be getting shot from nowhere. Like we'd be like, you know, how it was a hallway. Then you had like the. We'd be waiting for cops, and then I'd just get fucking shot from nowhere. And I'm it was like, like, why they were am I dying? Through the walls, because I'd walk out there and look to the left, and the guy would, the cop would be crouched down behind a plant, shooting us through the wall. Yeah, that was the worst luck ever. I played like a hundred games. Well, and, and that was, that and that's what I was explaining yeah. to him is that when I played with you and Jared, none of that shit happened. So I don't know if it was a connection error or what we were having, but it was, it was fucking rough. We finished it. We finished the mission. Who opened up the match? I didn't. Wait, so. What kind of internet do you have? We have the same internet. We both have Bright House. Bright House, 10 megs, or... I have yeah. 90. I don't know what I have. Goes up that high now? Good <laughs> lord. But it, it, depending on who's host, it could make a big difference. Well, that's but, what I was saying. I was like, maybe it wasn't host. I checked both of our signals, and it was there was no problem. I only so. have CenturyLink. I have 10 megs. I, I, I've hosted it. I don't have any problems. Yeah. Like I say, it just sounds like you guys got a really glitchy, shitty game. Yeah. Like, that's shitty. That, that that's And that was our first experience. Too. And then we did the mission... Right after that one, where you had to go to the senators and you had to break his vault and plant the uh, the art. Yeah, it's part the of the it's part of the art heist actual mission. That one, they like you had to turn on the power. No, the no, no, no. Thing. We went and we went to the train depot to get our money. Oh, the money. train after yeah, mm -hmm. and then there was the third mission is what I'm talking about. That one was bullshit because there was literally rooms full like 17 fucking cops that would just stand there and they would stand because I was playing with um, I was playing with Wolf and he was playing with Dallas and there's Chains and Hawkson they would just stand with the cops like they were fucking friends like high-fiving and shit not literally but they would just stand there and what nothing it, went out I was, I was in the room with the computer and, and Justin I, was upstairs it on was, the, no, the power the thing, they were dead. And I would, and no, I would, they were alive. No, because I'd walk out there in the hallway, and one of the guys would be me, and there'd be like thirty cops out there. And I'm, I'm not exaggerating. There would literally be like thirty dudes. That's happened to me and Jared. They were dead. Uh, well, no, they would all of a sudden start shooting at him, no, and they would kill cops. Really? See, they, yeah, you guys just had a super just, laggy yeah, game. Yeah, it was weird. It was because really the weird. only glitch I've ever had, it sounds kind of like what you guys had, whereas me and Jared were playing, and we were getting to where Hoxton and Dallas, it was the only, one of the only times that I've played where it was just me and him, but like they would, like, they would, they would be standing up, and it would say they had full health, but on one of our screens, we would see them downed. And the other person. guy, like yeah. me and Jared, be playing, and Jared's like, "Oh, he's down." I'm like, "He's not down. I'm, I'm fucking looking at him. He's like spinning around." Well, that was the thing. Like they'd be standing there, then they would start running, then they would just run around the cops, yeah. and then the cops would start it. moving, and then they would shoot each other, and then it would stop. It was there was a bunch of weird shit. There, I read online. There's a handful of scenarios, and I don't understand why Overkill doesn't just delete them. That glitched the game. Because every time you play it, it's going to be a little bit different. The cops are going to spawn in different places. There are a handful of scenarios that just break the game, I guess. I don't want to say that... that it's, I don't want to say that I was let down. I don't want to say that Payday 2 was a bad game at, at any measure. And I don't want people to think that, that are listening, be like, oh, you know, you hate that another game. It's not that at all. I just had a very bad first I was experience saying, no, it. With sounds it. like we're, we're going to have to play again. Yeah. So I'm going to have to hold your hand. I got you, baby bird. Don't Thank worry. You. Thank you. You also got to remember, this is, like, not a EA. This is a, co a company of probably, like... See, I don't. 50 guys I don't or think he, yeah. Payday fucking makes it like I can say Payday's better than nine ninety seven fucking. They don't EA have games. the testing that EA does though. Is this is true? I mean, it is a smaller company. On top of the fact, I mean, playing the first Payday, and it's probably a good reason why I liked Payday two so much, is because when you play the first one, and then you play the second one. Like, believe me. Like, the shot box in the first one was so shitty. Like, it was so shitty. Like, I'd be shooting people, like, point blank, and it almost not hit them yeah. half the time. Like, well, that's so the they problems fixed I was a having. lot of the problems with this one. You hit my mic, too. Oh, his mic was shit. Every five seconds. <laughs> I'm just like, I, I almost was like, turn your mic off. He's like, you want me to turn it off? And I'm like, no, that's just a dick move. <laughs> but um, there was parts where, like, I was using, because I had the first gun, we were low level. I was like, I had my gun in people's mouth and just lighting them up. No hitboxes, no shot detection, no nothing. And then, because some of the times we were playing with Jared when we did the bank heist with, uh, we played with that one guy for a bunch. 
But um, you know the bank that we had to use the the big big drill on to get through yeah. to get the gold bars. That one I was you know, clips upon clips upon clips and not getting hit boxes. Not to say that you know because that was on overkills that was hard. Only time you get the hit boxes on that one is if you hit them in the face because it's hitting their armor. The guys with ceramic armor in that game are invincible. I <laughs> that is my yeah. biggest gripe. I, in all honesty, I think payday one was harder. Payday yeah, 2, payday one the cops are 10 times more durable, it seems like. Because ceramic armor is fucking invincible. Like, those dudes start, like, you get, like, eight dudes coming with ceramic armor. You have to headshot all of them. You yeah. have to shoot them in the head, like, four times because you have to knock their helmet off, then actually shoot them in the face. And that's my only, that's my only complaint. Yeah. My only real complaint. I'm like, I, I'm bitching about the bad experience I had because yeah. I don't think the game is bad in any of whatsoever. It, my only that. real complaint is that I didn't have a reticle. That, that I didn't like. So. I still don't have one. I still iron sight most of my guns. The only one I found was a... Because I don't like how the unlock system is. I want a laser sight. That's what I want. I do have those for my handguns. I haven't got one for my assault rifles. That's cool. But, uh, like, the only scope I got was, like, a, a ACOG scope. And I don't like ACOG scopes. I did put it on my single-shot rifle because that bitch is bad. Now, can you agree that this is a absolute awesome step in the right direction as far as shooters go? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's great. I think that the, the, the multiplayer aspect of it, I liked how you're kind of the bad guys, uh, you know, and having the hideout area was cool with all the different stuff you can do there. It was neat that... So you know your mask, it tells you how much money you've acquired. Yeah, the HQ, your game. and you have your vault system and everything. I mean, there's a lot of good at the game. I think it's pretty awesome, and I definitely want to play more. Have you watched the web series? No. It's pretty cool. You're kind of like Robin Hood. All right, so let me get to my main game. Turtles, Out of the Shadows, Xbox Live Arcade, the last one of the Summer Arcade, $14.99. Definitely think that it's worth the price tag. Uh, I pulled up the credits very first of all, and I watched the, the credits. It was pretty cool. They have um, all the pictures of the developers, and every developer picture has the turtle as their nose, which was kind of neat. So, like, they all picked their favorite turtle, and their nose is a picture of the turtles and has their bandana on it. It was kind of cool. The music is fantastic in the game. Uh, I think it was really great. Do you agree? You yeah, like the music? Yeah, music was good. Yeah, the graphics are solid for a downloadable title. It's good. You start the game as uh, April O'Neil, which is kind of funny, and you use her as the tutorial of how to use the buttons, jump, slide, this and that and everything. You're basically a cross. The game is a cross between... I don't know. How would you... It's a cross between the new cartoon and the old cartoon. Yeah, it's... There's elements of the newest cartoon, kind of like when it comes to like the turtles themselves, like why Mikey's short because he's the youngest, why Donatello's the tallest, why he's the skinniest. Like it gives them more like Raphael's the badass and he's he's the biggest, he's the strongest. Like when it comes to character attributes and the way they look, it does that. And the storyline is and following the, story, the cartoon. Yeah, the storyline follows the cartoon, which is closely related to the comic. Is the cartoon good? The cartoon's fantastic. I love the cartoon. Yeah, the cartoon's great. You use the A button for basically everything, all the actions, which kind of gets to be monotonous. You jump up, crouch, slide under things. Uh, when you have to interact with opening doors and things like that, walking up the ladders, it's always the A button, which does make it easy, but it, I don't know. It's, it seems to hold your hand too much. Uh, the cutscenes, when it goes to a cutscene, you'll be in the middle of a uh, battle or whatever, and then it'll go to the cutscene part. It's a comic book style, which is kind of neat. So it bleeds into the screen, goes comic book style, and then when it comes out, it kind of bleeds out of the screen and goes back to the computer video game graphics or whatever, which is kind of neat. The loading screen is a badass picture of Leonardo meditating. Yeah, did y'all say you saw it, didn't you? you uh, no, because uh, we got ready to start it and everybody... Yeah, well, I'm saying you saw the load screen of... Leonardo. He's meditating there. I don't remember. It's awesome. you, made, you made the comment. Too. I wish they had all four. I wish it changed. It would rotate, yeah. It would just rotate because that was pretty neat. Uh, so you have a base, and you don't get to walk around the base, but when you do pick the different options on the menu, it does kind of, the camera flies through the base, uh, the, the underground subway area. And so when you go to the mission, the, the camera will fly over to the map, and then you can pick what mission you want to do. Or if you want to upgrade your weapons, which you can do, it'll fly over to the workshop if you want to upgrade the actual turtles themselves because you can upgrade them also you go over to the workout area and it has a punching bag and some weightlifting stuff that's kind of neat you can go to you can actually play the game in a 2d beat em up side scroller type thing which is kind of neat and it's called arcade mode and you actually go over and there are three arcades and you get to play it as an arcade game which is kind of neat and you're actually playing the entire game yeah. in that style it's really cool. Uh, it's a lot of fun. The turtles themselves move like ninjas. You feel like a ninja. They move very intuitive. Like when you're running around, you'll be fighting, 
if you run and jump and hit the attack button and you're near a wall, you'll slide and jump off a wall and kick him in the face. If you're up near a dumpster, you'll jump on like off the dumpster and push yourself off the dumpster and hit him. If you're near one of your brothers, you will do the turtle back roll where like you roll over them. One of the neatest things was if you're by the fire escape, you'll jump up, grab the fire escape and do a double kick right into their face, which is kind of neat. So that's really cool. They well, they they emphasize a lot on how each turtle plays different. Each turtle has a different move set. Like not one move is the same. I mean, not necessarily. I'm saying between their weapons. Like Michelangelo will run and drop kick someone if he, that's his run attack. Raphael will run and jump up and elbow them in the face. Leonardo headbutt. does. Yeah, well, that's his stealth. He'll that's his ste- stealth. He'll stealth. He'll headbutt. Um, Leonardo fucking judo chops someone. He'll walk up and chop them right in the back of the neck. Uh, Michelangelo just like he taps him on the shoulder and then knocks him out like he just punches him really hard and they have special attacks too which is almost like you have to do a street fighter move Yeah. when you get your power well, meter built up you hold right trigger and then you have to do like a Hadouken or yeah. a Shuriken to do their power move which is kind of neat so yeah. it's very interactive that way so it doesn't get it, it doesn't feel like it's getting stale but it does get a little stale you can switch between the turtles sort of fluid, but sometimes it sticks. It, it sticks, because it, it's not like, if you're going to be midway through combo, it's not going to drop your combo and you automatically fail if you're Michelangelo. You'll finish your combo, then move. So you use the D-pad, and if you are Leo and you have a 15-hit combo, you can immediately switch to Raph and then keep hitting, because if you're Leo and you kill the guy in front of you, you're going to lose your combo in a second, you know? So you hit over on the D-pad, and you'll switch to Raph, because he's standing right in front of a guy. Then you get up to a 20-hit combo. Then you switch over to Mikey, and he has a bad guy in front of him. And then you get up to a 25-hit combo. I'm doing my arms like you, Jacob. <laughs> my only thing is, uh, so I'm assuming from you saying that, that all four of them are present the whole time while you're playing. The entire yeah, regardless game, of too. You, yeah, there's, right. there's not a second where, like, Leo's like, oh, I'm going to run over here. I didn't Which, know if it was like Turtles in Time, Super Nintendo style. Like you picked your character, you went and you just played the game with that guy. He was the only one you had. You have the, all four turtles all right. at all times. In the beginning of the game, it'll let you pick the one you start out with first, and that is it. But then it's the D-pad. Up is Michelangelo, left is Leonardo, right is Raphael, down is Donatello. We could all play too. You can play four player. That's so we don't. Awesome. So you, if you did, if you had four controllers, you turn them all on, and then it has a select screen, and it'll say one player is Leo, second player is Raph, third player is Donatello, fourth player is Michelangelo. So you can play four players. And they they really do have, you know, strengths. Like Donatello is a badass at range. Like his bow is ridiculous to use with. Bow? Bow staff. Bow staff. Oh, okay. And I use Michelangelo because he's the fastest. He's really fast, and if you upgrade all of his uh, abilities, you you upgrade. Basically, their health, their speed, their attack, and their defense. And if you upgrade Michelangelo's stuff, he's pretty strong. He's the weakest of them all. But for, he's the fastest. But he's so fast. The reason I use him the most, too, is because he's fast. He does a lot of hits. So he'll use the nunchucks, and I'll get up to 10 hits. And when you get 10 hits, you can do a power hit. And so I'll get 10 hits, do a power hit, to let my uh, combo meter drop to zero, then do 10 hits on the game and get a power hit. And if you knock a guy out with a power hit, you get plus 50 experience. So you, instead of getting just 10 experience for killing a guy, I get 50 experience. So I'm leveling my guys up. And every time you level, you get four points. You can put all four points into one turtle, or you can put the points one point into each turtle. Or what I'm doing is I level Michelangelo and Donatello because those are the two I use the most because I get the range attack and I have then the speed with Mike, Mikey. So It's yeah. awesome. I think it's... Badass. I use Michelangelo and Leonardo, though, because those are my two favorite turtles. Yeah, I like Michelangelo because he's really good. Uh, he's Don Solo's for his range. Leo's pretty good, too, because he's overall. Raph is shitty until you upgrade him because... He's a fucking powerhouse. He's powerhouse. Just, he'll hit something and destroy it. Well, but he also has, like, slow. the shortest range weapon, too. Like, he has to be on top of you to attack. So I would yeah, imagine, his, I imagine that already. He's and his match defense up. is horrible. He takes... Da- like, he, he's... Four or five hits and he's done. See, I felt that way about Donatello. Donatello, I felt when he went. He, Donatello has gone down more in my game than any other. Leo felt like the only one that had good defense. Yeah, I would say. What do you consider like almost like uh, them to be like difficulty levels, like almost like a skill level to like start playing as? Because I mean, like Dragon's Crown, you know what I'm saying? Like they had like that. Like the mage was an expert's like considered class play because it was more harder to Michael play the Angelo game Michelangelo would be the easiest because he is the quickest. His him, combos, Donatello, Leo, Raph. I would honestly yep. say him, Leonardo, Donatello, Donatello. then Raph. Because yeah. Raph, Donatello has really good range, but his combos are a little slower. But with Raph, Raph would be the hardest to use. I would say the truly best all-around character is Leonardo, though. Leonardo is the absolute best all-around. All around. He's very, yeah. he's quick, he has good range on his weapons, and his combos flow pretty well. He's a leader. He's supposed to be all-around. 
the the banter is fantastic. The writing is amazing. The Michelangelo's always talking and stuff through it, making jokes about stuff. He talks about alternate universe where Shredder's the good guy. Would he still wear the stupid mask? Uh, which is kind of funny. Uh, he talks about what if they uh, had a fifth turtle, which is kind of you know uh, Venus de Milo, like yeah, in the old show. Yeah. Um, he talks about this one point. He goes, "There was all this stuff I wanted to do today, and I didn't do any of it. But I don't regret not doing it. Should I be regretful?" And then Raph's like, shut up, you're giving me a headache! Uh, which is really funny. I love the voices for Donatello, Leonardo, and Michelangelo. I think the voice for Raphael is horrible. And, his, and they don't use the Nickelodeon voices. Because the, the Nickelodeon voices are spot on on what I feel the Ninja Turtles It's Sean Austin's about. Raphael. Yeah, Sean and Austin's I, Raphael. And I think he does a great job. I don't want to talk about any of the horrible things, just Let's uh, talk about some of the good stuff. You go to the refrigerator to look at all the concept art, which I thought was kind of cute, you know, because, like, you, you know, kids put their pictures on the refrigerator, which is kind of cool. Uh, the workshop is cool because you get new weapons, and you probably didn't even get to the point where you can upgrade did, your weapons. I got Michelangelo's his, but I, I couldn't figure out how to use the goddamn thing. Well, you have to get their power up then, too. That's oh, the thing. okay. You can get the weapon, but then you have to unlock the ability to use the weapon. Then you have to equip it like uh, you... Cycle through your items with right trigger, and then just hit. Le uh, or excuse me, you cycle through the weapons and items with your left trigger, and then use your left bumper, and you have to equip it like you would use your pizza to up your health or something. And that's the thing too is if we were playing, or even if you're playing single player, like if Michelangelo picks up everything, only mm -hmm. Michelangelo has it. everything. And, so and the other turtles can't use it. So what I would do is I would find myself in between combat switching all turtles and be like okay every turtle has at least one pizza and that's how you replenish your health so when i came up to them then i would recycle through all of them and be like who has the lowest health because they all do have health and the computer if they get their ass kicked they will lose health and you'd be like you'll switch to raf and go oh crap he has one inch health bar left what the hell man the computer's been taking damage with them and if he has no pizzas then uh that kind of sucks if they do get killed they go down and you can revive them but it uses your pizza up that you have in your inventory for whatever turtle you have do so. they use cool words like cowabunga? Eh, not... They haven't really got to that point. I, not necessarily that point. It's just the banter, like, they're serious. Like, it seems more... Not necessarily adult-like compared to, like, the 80s, 90s cartoon, but they seem like they're on a mission. They're doing the mission. Yeah, it, it isn't Michael like... Michael goes, kind of, cowabunga! It doesn't do that. Yeah, nothing. Kind of heartbroken, then. Yeah, it... it, it it works well. It it goes well. All right, so let me uh, talk about some of the negative things. The camera is horrible. The oh, counter okay. system is laggy as shit. It's never consistent. It doesn't work, and I just find myself hitting A to dodge all the time. You get stuck in the doors all the time because you'll go into a tiny little room that has, like, a pizza and some shurikens or... You know, an energy drink, which gives you some of your power moves. All three turtles will follow you in, and they'll all stand in the doorway, and you would run out. You actually run into them. You don't you don't move through them like you would in most games. Uh, they actually take up physical space. So I had to find myself switching to the front turtle so I can actually move out, which was stupid. I got to one of the bosses, and the camera got in my way so much. Uh, it's crappy. The checkpoint system is not the best. So I, I get to the third part. I'm almost ready to beat the boss. All four turtles die. Do you want to go back? Yes, I go back. Have to watch the entire cutscene again. No way to skip it. Uh, that aggravates the shit out of me, man. It's 2013. It should know that I've died once and that I should be able to skip it. I shouldn't have to watch it again. That is dumb. Real quick, last thing. Uh, you did say the, that Leo is the leader or whatever, and Raph makes fun of him for that. They're walking along, and Raph goes, Hey, Leo. What does a leader actually do? He goes, well, what do you mean? He goes, well, I'm the jerk. Mikey's the funny one. What do you do? What does a leader actually do? You don't do anything. He goes, I'm the smart one. I make decisions. He goes, no, no. Donnie's the smart one. He goes, you don't do anything. Yeah, they, they talk a lot of shit to each other. And you can actually use your taunts in battle, uh, which is kind of neat. And then, like, if you get an upgrade, you can upgrade Leo's taunts, and he gives everybody in the team, like, a, uh, a bonus where you have unlimited power energy for 10 seconds, which is kind of yeah, neat. you can buff each other. Yeah. You can buff, <laughs> each, other. buff, buff each, each other. Shit out of each other. But there's a lot of upgrades and stuff, a lot of replayability through it. Um, I was saying all four players on the thing. Besides, I, I have to knock it down a little bit. I'm going to give it three out of four turtles because of camera problems, laggy issues on controls. It just doesn't feel fluid enough. It hasn't... I think it needs... A patch. One, one solid patch to fix some of that bullshit. Because the biggest problem I had, because you can do stealth parts. You can go through the game stealth if you want to, to a degree. 
I had Tell me about your glitch. My glitch was if like because I I play if I play with Leonardo and uh, Michelangelo. I was playing as uh, Leonardo, and I was running. And the parkour aspect to it, the ninja shit, is badass. Like they're very fluid, very. The strength of their jumping is fucking ridiculous. They can literally jump like a building, like rooftop. But um, I got to a part I was stealthing around. And you can make it so your brothers will follow you, or they'll hang back. They were following me, and they're all in the... They, when you go into stealth, they'll go into a stealth mode, too. And uh, I I knocked a guy out, and then I just started attacking the other ones. The Krangs come out, because I'm at TCRI. And it glitched. They never came out of stealth mode, so they just stood there and got their asses whooped. So I had to, I had to manually switch to each turtle oh, for them geez. to fight. They would knock a guy out, then stop moving. Then I had to switch to another one, knock a guy out, he would stop moving. That was the biggest glitch I found so far of the game. The uh, the parkour thing's really cool because you talked about the Indiana Jones part where the ball's chasing you. They do that like this, but all the mouse bots, the little tiny mouser bots, are all mm -hmm. chasing you. There's like a million of them, and it's a big wave, and you have to parkour through the... I haven't gone uh, that far yet. Yeah, you have to parkour through the tunnels and stuff and so you're sliding and jumping and spinning and it's actually really cool it was really neat there's very the they're very agile like you can literally like there's a part where you have to you run up a building mikey runs up one side jumps runs up the other side jumps up flips over and they run with their arms behind their back which i was so here here's about. a glitch you can see the controller i set down the controller there and you can see that it's glitched and he's just doing backflips I was running and the camera got stuck in a bad position and so I set down the controller and he on it He just does this and he didn't stop until I moved him And that and that's the cool part too is like if you're in a if you're in a fight And there's a guy that's about to hit you because they'll glow a certain color white you can dot White is a normal move you can counter uh, green is a special move you can counter and knock them out and knock them out and then red is you can't counter you have to dodge. dodge so like if a red one comes you can run at the wall and then backflip over them like there's a lot of elements you can use in the level to do certain things there's one the only one I've seen knockout for Michelangelo's is the guys the the foot will go to jump over you Michelangelo just whips his nunchucks in there, knocks him out, and just keeps running. He he, I love him, Michelangelo, because he knocks him in the nuts all the time. He kicks him in the nuts. He uses his nunchucks to hit him in the nuts. It's awesome. Yeah, there's his. They call it a uh, turtle knockout or or the TK T, the the TKO, and like he's doing tricks and then just kicks him in the balls. Yep. He <laughs> kicks him in the nuts and then he like hits him in the back of the head with the nunchucks. And they, that's it. They do the one from the movie too, and I, I had I looked it up on YouTube. Uh, they do a four turtle TKO where they use all four of their shells, shells and mash a guy in the center. Uh, and you, that's and, and awesome. if you and if you you get like five hundred experience or something for it like that if you use all four turtles and do the the turtle shell knockout. So and you get I think it's an achievement too. I'd imagine so. That sounds like something you'd achieve. Because that was what I think you'd have to use. They do it to Shredder's underling. You had Vanilla Ice concert. Yeah, you have to. Uh, I think you would have to have four human players, though. I don't think the AI would She'd be do able to it do with it. you. Yeah, I've done a couple of moves, which is pretty cool. Where uh, uh, I jumped off, I jump and. I bounced off of Donatello's staff and I came down with both nunchucks and took a guy across the face. It was pretty cool. Well, so I did one with Donatello and Michelangelo. It was just he was happened next to me. Donatello sticks out his stick and uh, Michelangelo whips his nunchucks around it and Donatello whip him, whip him in a circle and he'll throw him. So they have a multiple ones. This game's amazing, I think. Besides the poor camera, poor controls for 15 bucks, all the upgrades, replayability, uh, I think it's easily a buy. Oh yeah, it's and, definitely a buy. It's just like you say, if they if they if they increase the camera angle farther back a little bit, that would probably and it's a little more stationary. Yeah, it floats too much. You have too much control where there's no lock on. So like you could be attacking, and if you don't get a chance because you're attacking four guys, it'll swing to the front. Yeah, it, it won't. Well, mine, I, I haven't got it to move. Like I'll just keep going towards the camera until I manually move it behind him again. I don't know if I, I missed it, but is the gameplay like Arkham, like when you're fighting with Batman? Kind or? of. It's a little bit like that, okay. but it doesn't play as well. It doesn't play as right. well. The counters aren't even close to as as good as it should be. And that's the thing is, I I would I did the tutorial. He didn't. We were on Xbox Live talking. He's like the the counters just seem like blocks, and if you don't counter right, then they block. 
the, you have to hit the counter at like the perfect time. Yeah, I thought I literally thought my B button was broken on my controller, and I switched out controllers because it was not working at all for me. Yeah, when you guys start talking about counters, that's what popped in my mind. And it, well, Arkham. it does the same thing like Arkham. Like if there's two guys tagging the same time, you hit BB twice, and he'll like I did it with uh, I did it with uh, Leonardo, and like he catch like hits them both with his sword, and like he does like a weird like flip move and no- knocks two people out at the same time. I think it's a buy. I think this is by far, I mean, they saved the, the golden nugget for the end. This is by far the best one of all four games on the Summer Arcade. Definitely worth 15 bucks With one patch to fix the camera and fix a little bit of a lag issue in the controls, I would give it four out of four turtles. But right now, with those two major problems, I can't give it a perfect score. We're going to go ahead and take a break, guys, and we will be back for 30 minutes of miscellaneous crap. Hello and welcome back to 8-Bit Bastards 30 Minutes of Melissa's Crap, where we are all completely exhausted and big turds. So this evening's what if question, we kind of stole this one as well and modified it to our own and shortened it a little bit. What if you had one superpower? Video game power? What if you had one video game power and we picked four of these, there was a positive and negative to each side. So when you get something really good, you have to have something bad. And we kind of already did this a little bit before when Brad became Sonic Super Speed and he had to be three feet tall. It's worth it, though. It's worth it, though, because he said he'd just nep tap everybody. At Super Sonic Speed, <laughs> you guys don't even know it. We would know it would be on the ground. The ball would explode. Like, I would do it so many times that by the time it, the pain registered to your brain, like you said, your balls would explode. Would you really want to be three feet tall, though? It would suck, but uh, I don't know. I don't think it'd be that bad. Would you get chicks? Could you get chicks? I could just. You, would you be homunculus? Would you be like 100% proportion? Or would you be like a little person? Or would you be like a little person? Where your arms looked all messed up. Big forehead. I imagine you would be proportioned. I, I'm going proportioned, so all your legs would fit the, the frame and all that. So we decided that it would be kind of tough to pick one of these because we all agreed that one would be very easy to pick. So we're just going to say, you know, some positive and negatives and what we thought of this. So the first one we came up with is the positive, if you were Link, you could have all of his weapons and you could have his magical ability bag to house all of this stuff. The negative was Navi would follow you around all the time talking to you. Forever. 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 Like I said, I still say it wouldn't be too bad because Link has jars and you just bottle that bitch. But you can't. I don't think... think She floats behind you at all times talking to you. You don't know if you've never tried. She's not a normal fairy. She's not a fairy that replenishes your life. She's a guide. Buy some raid. Hey, hey, listen, listen. Shut up. <laughs> Have you ever seen Labyrinth? Yeah. Where he had the, uh, the dwarf guy. He has the thing killing fairies. <laughs> oh, yeah. And they get up and bite the girl. Bite her on the face. Hoggle? Is that his? Hoggle? Hoggle. 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 How do you remember that? Hoggle. I watch a lot of Labyrinth. I watch a lot of David Bowie. <laughs> That's a lot of data. Power the babe. What babe? Babe of the power. Power of what? Uh, so the next one that we really thought was really awesome was if you were Mega Man, you would get the buster and you would get the ability to do wall jumps, but the buster had to be on your dominant hand. You would lose. You would lose an army. You'd have a fucking Mega Blaster. What would you do know. with it, though, in the real world? Destroy yeah. cars. <laughs> I, have, I have really bad grenades. <laughs> I would destroy yeah, people. I was about to say, like, so the most gonna... quoted thing for me is if I had a grenade launcher right now, so having that on my right hand would be bad for everyone. Would you always charge it or would it just be like a single blast? Whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. That didn't come in until Mega Man later. The, uh, Mega Man 1, he does not have charge, charge ability. Yeah, say, if we're going Does off he wall just... jump in that one? I don't even think he wall jumps huh? in the first so he one. He doesn't wall jump in that one. So we're taking like Mega is Man it, X well, series. Just, no, I'm pretty sure in the old Mega Man you wall slid. Well, it's slid. You That's slid. not wall jump. You didn't wall jump. But now can you also maybe shoot people and take their power and like shoot, maybe kill a guy with a shotgun and you have a shotgun now? Yeah, I was like, how would, it, would you get the snake and cotton? Oh, no, you got, and you, the only way you get weapons is you got to defeat another blaster user. It yeah. sticks to Mega Man, I mean. Could you blow up Walmart and have the power to crush people's dreams? Well, if you blow up Walmart, it's going to crush half the county streams, but... Because <laughs> they won't have jobs. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I Dicker jibs. No writing anymore. I mean, it would be hard to become no, left-handed. No, you, you could just become left-handed. My bitch would be I couldn't play video games anymore. Like, that would yeah. be the biggest bitch. But if you went by Mega... And that's the thing. That's the bitch about the dominant hand, because in Mega Man, the cartoon one... He would his hand yeah, would come he didn't out make of it. a hand. It you would, would have he's to a have a robot, so yeah. it essentially it would not be too far fetching. He's a robot, so. But that's what he. But we're going Mega Man One. Yeah, Mega Man One. In the cartoon, he would just he would touch people and absorb their power. You'd have to Velcro pants. 
You couldn't use buttons anymore, really. Oh, no more buttons? <laughs> no more. I mean, that I'd wear be... gym shorts. I'd wear gym shorts all the time. That's all I wear now, pretty much, when I'm not at work, so. Yeah, I would, that how, would be. Here's my thing. Is no more pull ups. I'm a, I'm a chubbier guy, per se. Like, how's wall jumping going to affect me? Like, I don't have the ability to run for, you know, run, jump you... off the wall to what? I can wall jump now. <laughs> you have a point. Yeah. So, Mega Man, it's pros and cons. Next one, you you got to be a bad person to do this one. So if you were... The more I thought about it, it uh, I would just... I'd probably... Sing Shung. Sing... Shang Song. Shang Song. You would have the ability to shapeshift, which would be awesome, and you would be basically immortal, could live forever, but you had to kill people in order to stay young, and if you didn't, you would, have, you would start to rapidly age. See, in here, I just thought about it, like, I don't know, you could go to a prison and find, like, where the hell's, like, all the fucking, like, pedophiles and stuff, turn to a prison guard, kill them... Morph out and leave. You just make me feel bad because that was my favorite. That's the one I would pick. I was say, I, 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 honestly, I mean, the more and more I thought about it, I was like, oh, Shang Tsung doesn't really seem Oh, no, that man. Bad. I, I would kill all sorts of people. I can't even say I would just kill bad people. The fact that I could change shape, I would, it See, would be bad for everyone. Would you, you be, would you be like... Like, I don't think I'd be a bad guy, but I would definitely be like that super, super violent, bad, aggressive you like, would become a hero. You would become a bad you guy. You would be the guy probably. from like, Chronicle. Because you, you, would you, would lose your sense of, yep. you would lose your sense of identity because you would never look like you anymore. Oh, believe me. No, that's a, that was my biggest gripe with Chronicle. Most people are like, I don't, I don't see how that happened. I'm like, I yet. can grasp that. Like, I personally can grasp that because I'm the type of person that I would do that type ultimate of shit. Ultimate power ultimately corrupts. Oh, yes. I'm a firm believer in it. Like, if I have the ability to do whatever the fuck I want and no one can stop me, I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. That's why Superman no is the best superhero. Me. I I hate the motherfucker, but yes. He you is, see he what is. happens in Justice when he goes crazy. He does whatever he wants. Defeat him. Superman defeats Superman. Superman defeats Superman. <laughs> it takes Superman to defeat Superman. That's he still awesome. does a lot of damage, though. Uh, so the next Superman, one, to... this one was kind of silly. If Mario Kart was real, everybody would have a Mario Kart instead of cars. So it would be all Mario Karts driving around. Oh, I'd be destroying people. But the negative would be everybody would have the shells and the lightning bolts and the mushrooms. I would hate it only because we wouldn't all have fucking mushrooms. So everybody's going to be driving slow ass fucking Mario Karts around. You know how fast they really are, though. 250 cc Mario Karts, man, they were slow (laughs) as shit. Like, What's 250 cc in real life? I mean, that's pretty quick. You got the computer pulled up. I imagine it's not that fast because that's only like that's a it's a, it's a very it's a small little, motorcycle. That's like a Kawasaki Ninja. It'll be 30 or 40 miles an hour. Well, the, I know a you know, motorcycle obviously going to move a lot faster. Go kart's going to weigh more. Say 40 miles an hour. Still, you want to tell me you want to do 40 <laughs> through 44 and all that? Like when it's at 60, I would just run you over with my Dodge. <laughs> you couldn't. And I know, it'd be yeah, only yeah, Mario Karts. That would and be people true. People drive like morons now. <laughs> yeah, but you'd be really safe. That's the only true benefit to it, is everybody had Mario Karts. You Nobody really could die. Hurt. Yeah, I mean, it's fucking Mario Kart. One, uh, 120. 120 miles an hour? 120 miles an hour. I guess that's not too bad, then. Everybody would be flying around. Yeah, I was saying, that, on that note, then I guess I'd take that back. It would kind of be entertaining. And you would have different ones, because, you know, well, if you pick, you know, Donkey Kong, you're really slow off the line, but you have high top end. But if you pick, like, Yoshi, go-kart... Then you're really quick off the line, but you don't have a high top speed. They say that Yoshi is actually the fastest character. Off the line. But like all around. That's what Bowser's the fastest. Or Donkey Kong is. Okay, so people. Well, I think it's Bowser. The different characters are fastest. I got into an argument with my friend, and he says they're all the same. No, no they're no. weights and all that. They're they're different. Different. In, in, in Mario Kart, the first one, the SNES one, uh, it's Peach. I think she's the absolute fastest. I thought it was Toad and Drybone or something like that, or the fucking one guy in the first one, because Toad's stupid fast. The big ones are the Mario fastest Kart. top speed, yeah. but they, they're they the slowest, slowest to start. Take off, yeah. But the smaller ones are the fastest off the line, but they don't have the high top speed. That's why if you can, you, if you can do the little uh, skid boosts, mm-hmm. you want to be the bigger guys, because yes, you're slow off the line, but then... You're, you'll fly by the people, and it's better to be the bigger ones because you do have their weight. You can run and knock them out of the way, but you do slow down a little bit. All right, so in our last one, Street Fighter. If you were in the Street Fighter, uh, you could be of any of the fighters and have their cool ass, but all your life would be in 2D, and everything in your life had to be settled by a fight. <laughs> I would just be Cyber Akuma and kill everybody. <laughs> Cyber Akuma? Yeah. We're talking about somebody that's from the fucking video games. Yeah. What Street what Fighter has Cyber, Cyber Akuma? Akuma? I'm lost on this. It's like Street Fighter EX and Marvel vs. Capcom. 
His alternate costume, if you buy it, is Cyber Kuma. So I, those are just alternate costumes, costumes, though. They don't make you a different ki- like yeah, person. You'd still just be a Kuma. He's still okay. But still, I mean, I don't know. It doesn't mean you would win, though. Because the thing about his win ratio, he's not one. Of, he's a not top tier character. He's not. A, he's not a B or C. He might be what? a C. He's not an A or B. Who, Akuma, Akuma in uh, Super Street Fighter is third. Third tier. No, he's third. It's Seth, Kami, Akuma. Oh, really? Yeah. I always know you guys are always yapping about it. It changes constantly. Yeah, I got the long hair. I'd be Kami. Pigtails. <laughs> I don't know what do it. Fucking the, weirdo. Is it you? Just you don't kill each other, so you you beat each other up. Yeah. It'd just be knockouts. I don't want to be I Balrog. Even or, though I don't like him, I'd, I'd want to be Balrog. He always had a lot of bitches and flashy things, so it's kind of cool. So kind of the last here is not really part of our what if you have question. This was for Jacob. What? The wrestling. Oh, what about it? You could be your dream wrestler, but you have to spend the rest of your life in a G string. And that's all you get and to wear. And it's flesh tone. Would I, I, would I be in flesh tone? No. <laughs> you, could be, you could be your favorite wrestler for the rest of your life. You could be like in uh, being, or Malkovich, Malkovich. What's that? Uh, being John Malkovich? You could go in Let's and. Malkovich, Malkovich. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel like I can't remember the name of the movie. I thought that was it. So being John Malkovich, you could go in and take over and be that wrestler, but you had to wear the man thong for the rest of your life. I do. At all times. All times? Yep. At all times. That's, that's, that's all you wore. You're in a man thong. Constantly. Constantly. You you're go to bed, your friends. You dick go, swinging. You go out to eat at a restaurant, you're wearing the man, man thong. thong. You go to the club, I just put man clothes thong. over it. No, no, you can't. No. You put the clothes on, they're transparent. Yep. Okay, but like, I was saying, Kevin Steen wears shorts and a t-shirt. No, no. no. This is the downfall. That's your a negative. man thong. It's a man you thong. You have to wear the man thong. I do it. <laughs> Who would you be? CM Punk. And you would be CM Punk. I was told you're I looked like... No. Like, mm. Maybe. I don't want to look Maybe like a man Maybe you're like thong. a foot taller. If you greased <laughs> If you greased your hair back, I could see it. I was say, if you're like a foot taller, greasy you hair, it? your arms wrapped up with big X's on him like a homo. Yeah. You have He's the best tall. in the world! This would be a foot... Oh, that'd be about two feet taller. <laughs> eh. He's not that tall. He's not that tall. No, he's not that... <laughs> Im said that tall is kind of scary, like, Jesus Christ. I'm a beast! Uh, all right, Justin, finish us off with a random game of the week. Spread your seed? What? Oh, speed runner. <laughs> what? I'm what? drunk. What did you write down? Come on, you're drunk. Where? I was looking at the Spelunk one and the runner on our board. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> seed spreader? <laughs> That's the name of the episode. It, it's just speed runner. <laughs> um, Spread your seed. It Come was, on, you're drunk. Uh, it's an indie game. Sorry. Uh, you can get it for three bucks. And what it is, it's a multiplayer game. Um, there is a story mode to it, but I've never played it. What it is, is you're a weird... What is it? What do you mean, like, what is it? I'm trying to get there, and you're fucking it up. You shut up and want to talk. What? It's no. like a race. Yeah. With, Speedrunner, uh, you, you have up to four characters. Each one wears a different suit. They're, they almost look like, um... Like luge guys. Yeah, like luge guys. Like they have, like, uh, like, their heads, like, go to a point. What type like, of game is this? It's an indie game. If you'd fucking listen, Jesus. It's like a race, though. That's the thing. That's the type of game you're looking at. It's like a race. Yeah, like Super speed Off-Road on Super well, no. Nintendo? No, it's Speedrunner. You're in... Kind of, actually. Super- when the track style, can, you continue. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll make the correlation in a minute. All right, you're in. You're in. Um, a, the level is circular. So like, what you do is like you you can run, jump, slide, and you have a grappling hook, and you get certain power ups to knock people out. And as one person's running, if he touches the end of the screen and you don't, or not necessarily you don't, but whoever as, is at the front end, if the guy running at the foremost is ahead of everybody and he touches the end of the screen before the stuff can load for him to keep running to the next part. Whoever is the furthest behind loses a life, and that guy gains a life. Yep. Oh, that's cool. Uh, another way you lose is, say, you're all running, and you fuck up, and you catch some of the bricks, and they slow you down. If you hit the bricks, the screen will come up and touch you. The, at the end of the screen, the, the, the trailing part touches you. You lose. So it's like some of the Mario games where the, the camera's moving, and you have yes. to, yep. like some of the jumping levels. And the reason I say it's kind of like the off-road for like Super Nintendo, like you're saying, is because it is, like you were saying, it's like a circular map. Uh, it's different in off-road because in off-road it was like God's eye view. You saw the whole map so you knew where the jumps were all that. You don't know where all your obstacles are in this game. It's literally as you're pacing around, you come up to the next one. Uh, like he was saying, you get a grappling hook. The grappling hook catches little like grif- or little dealies that are yeah, on the ceiling. There's parts of the ceiling that are too. white. And if it's white, you can hit your grappling hook, swing across. And that'll get you over like little ravines. Get over you over boxes. boxes. And, uh, like, there's a part where you have the grappling hook, grappling hook, and then, like, you jump, dive, and you slide under bricks to drop to the next part. And it's an ever, it's an, 
you just constantly keep going, and if no one, if everyone keeps up with everyone, because they have different power-ups, they have a grappling hook that, like, if a guy's really far ahead of you, you can grappling hook to him. It'll stop him, and it'll pull you to him. They have, where you drop more boxes, they have one where you'll shoot a rocket, and the rocket will stop a person. They have one that's, like, infinite speed. You just run crazy fast, and you glow. Like, you turn to Saiyan. It's like pretty much you get the star in Mario. You just run crazy quick, and everything you touch gets destroyed. Not necessarily destroyed, but, like, you won't trip over boxes and all you that type of shit. Just blow through them. It is the equivalent of the star. Four players? Four player. Can you do you and three bots? Um, I haven't done the single player yet, so I don't know. I've only played it multiplayer, and, and it is fucking awesome. It's probably one of my favorite indie games. You were playing local? Yeah, local. Oh, you had four people over? Yeah, yeah. Played well, it, I played it three player so far. I haven't played it four. I played it with my buddy Ron and my buddy Shun, and I played it with Brad and Ron. And there's parts, like, you can get good enough to the game where, like, you just fucking crazy blaster levels. There's little parts of the wall, too, that you can wall jump up little sections. And then there's a part where it took me a while to get used to it, and Brad witnessed it last night, is there's a section of the wall you can grappling hook to and whip yourself up. Uh, like not sure like a ravine but like this little section so you don't have to jump up it so you can it's like yourself around you're they're running forward and there's like a corridor that goes up and if you want you can run jump and there's like a ladder you can jump grab the ladder jump to the other ladder and hop up kind of like ninja guiden style like hop up the wall vertical corridor, corridor. Yeah. or and the, him and this ron do him and ron last night were just pulling this off like i cannot fathom how in the hell like their timing was just spot on every time they'd run past it They'd hit the grappling hook. It would perfectly hit the wall, just or the ceiling, just right, and literally it would launch them right up to the top of the thing. Yeah, it would shoot us to the it top. It was a reason I kept losing on the level because I could not like I you'd see me throw the hook and it would just either smack me into the wall or I would just completely miss it. I have to keep running. It's awesome. Can you do two people? Yeah, yes. I've done it two people. So you can do two, three, or four. Two, three, or four. And each each person's a, a color. The main guy is in a black suit. The next guy's in a white suit. The next guy's in an orange suit. And the other guy's in the blue suit. He looks like the tick. And I always want to play with either blue or the white guy. It's rather entertaining, though. I have to say, we played it last and night. The, it is kind of hard to get a grasp on it. It first. has a, a slight learning curve because if like the bitch is playing Ron because that fucker knows every level. He knows perfectly where to go in every level. How I many knew levels? there's I would say like ten. Ten and, levels. And there's each section has like three levels in it. In the one level that we kept playing, there's like two or three levels we kept playing, but there's parts where, like, if you don't know the level, then you're going to get fucked. And then when I originally played it the first time, I kept getting caught in the same spot that Brad was until I just learned where to hit the grappling hook to get up. Online play? Uh, yes, there's online play. So, like, if I bought it, we could play it? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it it's completely worth four bucks. If it's only four bucks, it's worth Actually, it was three. Three. It's three. Two ninety nine. Oh, Xbox? All right. Xbox Live, though. Indie marketplace, right? Yeah, and the the thing is too is like let's say we're all like I was saying before is like we're all we're all playing and we don't like we are with each other one hundred percent of the time. You hit sudden death, and the screen slowly s and gets smaller and smaller and smaller till you're running in a circle this big, and saying whoever touches the wall first wins immediately. Like all three of your lives don't matter anymore. Man, like, sudden I've, death it is. I've beat Ron that point. way. Like it, Ron will have three lives and I'll have one, and I'll beat him in sudden death, and I'll win the whole match. Were you happy when your uh, Microsoft points got transferred to Big Boy? Money? I was. I was actually very excited. I had fifty cents. Oh, yeah, I got bully for like a dollar. Humble bundle. No, I had like a couple bucks left over from points or whatever, and it was on sale for three. So I haven't played yet. I've never played bully. No more Microsoft points. All real I money, bully. I beat the hell out of bully. I beat yeah. shit out of bully. Yeah, I remember when that game was coming out. I think all the game stops in Rich, the Richmond area, Richmond and Chester area where I lived at the time all thought I was a psychopath who wanted to kill kids because like I went in every store you got that game where I beat the shit out of little kids <laughs> I want to play the game where I beat the shit out of little kids and the guys are just like you talking about bully you're damn right I'm talking about bully is it out yet because I hated the fact they kept getting it was because that was one of those games that kept getting pushed back finally came out on the PS2 supposedly mm -hmm. they were going to make a second one but they never did I couldn't see it they caught a lot of controversy they got a lot of like they caught all sorts of slack for that one I love being well, I heard it was supposed to be more violent than what it was originally made because so many people were you're playing as a fucking middle school, maybe high school Bully. kid, like beating, freshman, up, beating other kids. up other kids. Think about how cyber stop cyberbullying now. Which, if you feel like you're being bullied, man up and punch that fucker in the mouth. Don't cry about it. And that was the thing. But, like Jimmy was a bully. Like well, he, he was bullied, and that's the thing that like I was always he, like he owned up. Yeah, he owned up and whipped ass. Uh, like I don't know. Yeah, he, I love the bully game. That's he fantastic. didn't take, he didn't take people shit. Like the jocks started to fuck with him, and then you. Go to the gymnasium and beat the tar. Oh, my God. That sounds like it's a good game for bullied kids to play then. <laughs> no, because Jimmy was he rough. He turns into a bully. Sure, like, Jimmy yeah, was yeah, rough. 
I used Jimmy to love beating up fucking... the greasers. <laughs> I love oh, beating, I love up, beating the up the fucking greasers. greasers. But was... there's a lot to that game. There's the stealth element parts. Oh, and yeah. There's the side quest missions and going to the carnival and doing all that stuff. Like when you unlock the town. Yeah, when you like unlock when the you town. you get out of the school yeah. and actually get the I remember just skateboarding around because that was fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah I need to so curfew, seeing how long you <laughs> stay up until you just fall asleep on the road. Yeah. 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 Because he's a kid. He got he he couldn't fight off the sleep, so he just it's like one in the morning you fall asleep and you'll just be like running and falls <laughs> just over. Hit the you'd dirt. be skateboarding, you'd push, you get that one push and just hit the dirt. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so uh we got two random games in there, Speedrunner and Bully. So that's an oldie but a goodie. Oh, Thanks guys for so coming good. out and say goodbye. See ya. Goodbye. Yeah. Woo! I got out of the list. <laughs>